Broncos today as they hunt for Premiership number three. At ANZ Stadium, they were lucky to escape with a 16-all draw against Parramatta. Brisbane scored three tries to two, but the Eels almost stole the show. Former Bronco Brett Plowman did it tough against his old teammates, but he gave as good as he got. Brisbane put on the first try. Langer instigated it. Can finished it. Parramatta hit back when Butner easily stepped around O'Neill. Butner wasn't the only one racing away. Khan capitalised on a quick Langer tap. The Broncos struck first in the second half, but an intercept to Galbraith got the Eels back in the match. Stu Galbraith will race away. With 10 minutes remaining, Parramatta could have levelled at 16 all. Two minutes later, Blackett got another shot. He's got it this time. With just seconds on the clock, the Eels looked to steal the show. The pass was ruled forward, the scores remained locked at the death. Last night, music and fireworks signalled the start of the new season and the St George East Showdown. The Roosters got off to a flying start, Lowry raked back a Smith bomb and Silver cleaned up. It came off the St George head. that's a try! Speed King Werrett showed great hands to put East further ahead. But a try just before half time to Giant Goulet kept St George in touch. In the second half, Priddle and Sinclair stood toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Priddle missed with his big left, Sinclair didn't with his short right. The turning point came when East Luke Rickardson was sent off for a high tackle. Down to 12 men, the Roosters were shot. St George stormed home, winning 24-18. A Phil Blake special. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. Well, a huge crowd for the match of the day between Manly and Canterbury. Coverage of the game right after the news. In other round one results, West 20 defeated Illawarra 14. Penrith and Gold Coast 18 all, the weekend's second draw. While Newcastle thumped pre-season champs South Sydney 43 to 14. South's got off to a terrible start, losing captain Schifoletti with an eye injury. As he was being taken to hospital, Harrigan stormed through a gap for try number one. Harrigan will score from there. The Knights were on a roll. Nothing was going to stop Sargent. Sargent's nearly through. He's going to score himself. At 15 nil, Souths needed points. Mallow got them on the board, but the bunny looked cooked when Harrigan crossed for his second. Another try to Paul Harrigan. Souths drew first blood in the second half with extra numbers out wide. He's got a score here. Cochran's in for South Sydney. But once again, their defence let them down with McCormack darting across. For the Rabbitohs, Field never stopped plotting. And that's well deserved to the young halfback. But the pre-season champions were outgunned everywhere today as Newcastle ran in seven tries to three. Can he score his second? Yes! At Campbelltown, West and Illawarra were locked in an arm wrestle. The Steelers got first points with a try to Diamond. But West hit back when Smith crashed over. Illawarra led 8-6 at the break, but with the win behind them, West remained the more composed, coming home winners 20-14. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. At Penrith Stadium, the Gold Coast showed plenty of spirit, fighting back to draw with the Panthers. It was a match of swaying fortunes. Penrith off to a flying start thanks to the Freeman Cartwright double act. But the delicate boot of Dale Shearer kept the coast in the game. They trailed 10-8 at half-time. The Seagulls pushed a 14-10 before Brad Fittler scored the first of two quick Penrith tries and an 18-14 lead. But when Clinton Moore crossed with 11 minutes to go, it was 18-all. The failed conversion denying a much-improved Gold Coast victory. Jason Taylor is new to North Sydney, but last night it was like he'd been a bear all his life. Snappy halfback begged Greg Florimo two tries against Balmain at Leichhardt. And then scored one of his own. Had four goals and a field goal and he pocketed 13 points. For the Tigers, Tim Brasher landed two tries in a 33-22 losing side. At Caltex Field, Cronulla stunned Canberra with a 24-16 victory. Paul Green's work at halfback and Richard Barnett's pace put the green machine out of business. The young Sharks treated their big-name opponents with contempt. It was a four tries to three win. Laurie Daly's offering a rare moment in a side well beaten. 
In foot start of the new rugby league season. Out Manly, whittling away at the Bulldog lead. This if was there the were any off-season cobwebs here. still lingering, they were quickly removed. But while Manly were making an impact in defence, in attack, about all they managed to produce were mistakes. And Canterbury's weight of possession eventually told. Yes. With Jeff Toovey and Ian Roberts both pulling out only hours before kickoff, the Seagulls were struggling to match Canterbury's precision teamwork. Kraken, they can't stop the big man, can they? Forward pass. A let off for Manly, but after another turnover, the Bulldogs weren't going to be turned away again. Precision kickers Ridge and Halligan swapped penalties to make the scoreline 12-2. With half-time approaching, Canterbury went to the air, but once more, referee Harrigan denied them. No, no way, try. No, that's a try for sure. A tight tussle just after the break, Scott Wilson noticing the vacant spaces behind Manley's defensive line, and Brett Dallas did the rest. The football, and he puts it down. It's a try! Brookvale veteran Cliff Lyons finally found a hole. Matthew Ridge picking up the try. But when Daryl Halligan booted another penalty and the wily Terry Lamb turned on his soccer skills, Canterbury looked out of reach at 26-8. Williams, Williams with the pick up, tries to get between them, he does! The Bulldogs seemed to roll over though and Manley sensed the change in attitude, Old Janik cutting the difference to 12. Score! And the ever shrewd Cliff Lyons stealing another six points, 26-20. The fight back stalled there, though Canterbury regaining its composure to grab the two points. The Seagulls have turned the league world upside down with a stunning win over Brisbane. The Seagulls making Carrara their home for the first time, worked over the much-fancied Broncos for only the second local derby success. A record crowd of 22,000 turned up for the Gold Coast's first game at Carrara Oval. And no better way to open it than against the Premier's Brisbane. The first 15 minutes was tight. That's a great tackle there. Neither side prepared to give, but give the Broncos did. Tries to put a short ball in, he does. Oh, great pass. The Seagulls then pushed their lead to eight points when Dave Woods offloaded close to the line. Now Woods, oh, good pass. Try. Not long after half time, replacement Kevin Campion grabbed his second, this time a Dale Shearer special. Shearer steps, gets it away. It's a try. Behind by 14 points, the Broncos finally posted their first point. Madison gets over the line. But that man Shearer wasn't finished. Short pass off. Here's Scarden. Scarden goes in. A field goal by Shearer gave them a comfortable 13 point lead. Needing to score three times to win, the Broncos managed one from a super pass from Brett Galea. Great pass on try. Veteran Gold Coast lock Peter Gill put a smile on coach John Harvey's face when he finished the upset with a try in the last minute. It's on again! Another try! After the match, scenes normally reserved for grand final. Last year's Wooden Spooners now head the competition on three and have passed their entire tally for 1993. The Premiers, one solitary point. Team victory over South. Fullback Brett Mullins opened the scoring for the Green Machine after just four minutes. Winger Jason Croker then pushed a score to 10 0 with the simplest of tries. Canberra piled on another 16 points to lead 26 0 at half time. The Raiders continued to push the score along and at one stage led by 40 points to nil. Dennis Beecraft finally grabbed South's opening try to the delight of at least one loyal South fan. A high tackle by Ricky Stewart and a caution from referee Michael Lewis. The game ended with Laurie Daly touching down for Canberra's ninth try in their 46-16 win. Gann being the star, helping the Bears to a big win over East. It was a 26-8 victory at North Sydney Oval. Taylor scoring one of the Bears' four tries and kicking five from five. In the opening minutes at Bear Park, East ran the show while North trot a fine line. Oh. Fennick escaped with a penalty and Sean Hoppy this intercept from Craig Salvatore. In front of him, 90 metres of grass. Behind him, snapping roosters. Short of it, over the 30 now. Over the 20. Here comes Hudson. Short of it, scores the try. From Jason Taylor's rebounding stab kick, Norse rejigged their original plan for a second try. On it goes to 
Larson. Larson sprints through. He's away from Salvatore. The gap closed a little with Mark Prothero's effort just on half time. East trailing 12 8. What they needed was a converted try. Instead, they watched Jason Taylor pocket a solo six pointer. Jason Taylor! 20 to 8. East coach Mark Murray simmering as Greg Florimo and David Fairley combine to make it 26 8 at full time. Back inside is David Fairley and he scores the try. I have a stirring fight back from St George at Cogra Oval to win their first match of the season. The Panthers led 8 0 at half time, but an inspirational display from Gordon Tallis almost got St George home. Another upset at Belmore, Cronulla beating Canterbury with a last minute field goal. In 21 years of coming to Cogra Oval, Penrith have only left winners on one occasion, but that statistic had little effect on the Panthers this afternoon. Oh, that's a sensational try! St George were under enormous pressure. Again, great hands and a superb kick from Alexander gave Penrith an 8 0 lead. Alexander, he grab a kick ahead and Bill! Penrith. Dragons coach Brian Smith was demanding a lift in the work rate. Gordon Tallis provided just that. Over the, top of another one. the determination from Tallis lifted St George, but it wasn't enough. The Panthers hanging on for an 8-6 victory. Cronulla hasn't won at Belmore since 1984, and the drought looks set to continue as Canterbury raced to a 10-0 lead. But the Sharks produced plenty of fight to bridge the gap, and then Mitch Healy put them in front. With a minute to go, the scores were locked at 14 all before Healy booted home the winner. Cronulla undefeated after two rounds. Balmain has upset the Eels at Parramatta Stadium despite playing a man short for most of the match. Tigers forward Derek McVeigh was dismissed after just 20 minutes, but Balmain held on to win 14-12. Wests upset the Knights, while Illawarra and Manly played an 18-all draw. Entering their match against Parramatta with rumours running rife about Mark Dyer's future, Balmain got more bad news when Derek McVeigh was sent off midway through the first half after his temper got the best of him. to 11 men the Tigers were expected to fold but two tries to Greg Burke and Shane Russell saw the Balmain boys bounce back <laughs> Parramatta hit back early in the second half with a try to Brett Palman but the Tigers held on to win 14 points to 12 At Newcastle, the Knights were given a football lesson by West. The Magpies racing to a 16-2 lead after tries to Grief, Leeds and George Arles. Newcastle regrouped in the second half, Paul Harrigan leading the charge to level the scores at 18 points all. Back to Harrigan and Harrigan will score! But with 10 minutes to go, Sadara sealed the Knights' fate with a field goal to give the Magpies a 19-18 victory. And at Wollongong, it was another cliffhanger between Manly and the Steelers, though it didn't look that way after two quick tries to Illawarra. Some genius by Cliff Lyons saw the Seagulls level the scores, the halfback setting up tries to Cunningham and Gartner. 12 all, the Steelers struck again through Russell, but Lyons again rescued Manly when he set up another try for Gartner. Tim Wharton, 7 Nightly News. Thousand journey to ANZ Stadium to see Brisbane could pick up its first win of the season against St George. Things going to plan early. Madison in after four minutes. Goes through and Madison scores the try. Nine minutes later, a soft try to Phil Blaine. And two further tries in three minutes, 15 from half time, saw the Dragons skip out to 14-6. Oh, what a pass by Stephen, supported by Bradley. They won't catch Blake. Oh, Blake, he's very fast and he scores. The Georgian went to sleep around the scrum base seven after the break. The Broncos were back in the game, trailing by just four. Oh, shut the game. Have a look at this play. Oh, Carl Lewis. But a try by super sub Gordon Tallis, 10 from full time, was enough for the Dragons to make it two wins from two starts at ANZ Stadium. The Broncos now ponder a start to the season, three rounds without a victory. It has been a shaky start to the season for Manly, but with the class on the payroll, it was only a matter of time before they clicked. Through and Danny Moore, back on the inside is Gardner. He gets it to Lyons, and that's a 
to try to Manley. Cliff Lyons was simply brilliant, as was Terry Hill at 5'8", as Manley ran in 20 points in as many minutes. West defence was non-existent, as Manley dominated every facet of play. At half-time, it was 36 to 4. Yet again, well, pathetic defence from West. The Sea Eagles were relentless after the break. Again, it was Lions leading the way. Manly running in 11 tries for a 66 to 8 thrashing. Doesn't bring a smile to his face, but it could work. South Sydney coverage right after the news at half past six. The other round three results today were thrashings. Balmain defeated the Gold Coast and Canberra didn't allow Newcastle into double figures. For the Raiders' Reuben Wiki, it turned out a busy afternoon. He scored the first of his four tries in the 18th minute of play. But a touch of luck saw the Knights hit back through Barnes and Newcastle led 8-6 at the break. I think Newcastle have scored. The second half saw the Raiders go on the rampage. Clyde was back to his running best, setting up teammates and also grabbing some glory himself. Newcastle's defence wasn't there. They took the Raiders on up front, but were comprehensively beaten out wide. The Knights didn't score a point in the last 40 minutes. Canberra cross for 28. At Leichhardt Oval, the Gold Coast was back to its woeful best as Balmain ended their winning streak. Like Newcastle, at times the Seagulls' defence was non-existent as the Tigers toyed with the opposition. It was a seven tries to three thrashing with Brasher leading the way. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. The final match of the weekend is tonight when Penrith meet East. But whatever the outcome, it's Norths who will finish round three at the top of the ladder. Last night they beat Parramatta 16-14. For the Eels faithful, the perfect start to a Saturday night out. Stu Galbraith pushing through for first points. But the Bears had the speed out wide and it was 10 all at the break. The home side handed Norse the lead with some scrappy handling. Sean Hoppy winning the sprint. Even though Parramatta scored three tries to two, Norse played a better brand of football. But along the way lost John MacArthur for three months with an Achilles injury. At Caltex Field, a great start for Cronulla against Illawarra. The Steelers retaliated, but trailed 6-4 at half-time. And that's the way it stayed until the final 20 minutes. John Simon's bomb was swallowed by Neil Piccinelli, his try the first of three for the visitors. Craig Diamond flattened any chance the Sharks might have had, Illawarra home 20-6. Peter Overton, National 9 News. Last night at Penrith Stadium, the Panthers beat Easts 14-4, scoring three tries to one. East scored first when winger Shane Werrick finished a move. Penrith then enthused the 14,000 fans with two tries before the break, won by local hero Greg Alexander. The Panthers had two tries disallowed, but an intercept by Graham Mackay gave him a double and Penrith a 10-point win. In AFL. As soon as possible. Daryl Halligan from right in front. Leading point scorer in 1993. They seldom, they seldom miss those, don't they? 2-0 in. Centre of the ground almost, about 35 metres away from the line. And Dimmick runs off a perfect pass by Terry Lamb. There's a try coming. Lamb supports. And Lamb laid it on and then finished it off. You can't do much more than that, but we've come to expect that to be the standard of Terry Lamb. A very shoddy defensive game for this Rabbitohs outfit. One simple missed tackle. Craig Field rushes up very quickly. He's brushed off. And so too is Aaron McLean, who was just pushed away very easily by Dimmick. And Terry Lamb stayed on his feet, continued around and picks up the four-pointer. There's Craig Field going up quickly. That's the key missed tackle. A good fend from, from Dimmick, then the perfect positional pass to put Lamb into clear spaces and an easy 20 metre run to the line. 6 0 currently, the ball in flight looks good. Halligan gets an extra two. And
Canterbury after only about seven minutes of play lead by eight points to the last now as they go back to the right and Craigfield goes for a bomb out wide Dallas is under pressure the ball comes down favorably donica has got the ball onto the ground scooped up by South and put down I think that's Shane Wilson it is Shane Wilson gets a try Perfect hit back there from South Sydney that eight, had eight points scored against him in even time. A good tactic here from Craig Field. Last tackle, kick to the far side. It means that you can see the Canterbury players almost have to stand still while South have the momentum to come up. Doniger does a great job here. It's the last tackle. He knows that it's going to be a turnover if he doesn't release the football. And Shane Wilson doubled around. Good tackle there from Scott Wilson as well, the fullback for Canterbury. Great field from way out there in front of the Eastern Stand uh, fans. South Sydney captain, Dean Scherpoletti, still out injured. That kick is not good. Scoreboard improves though for South Sydney. Canterbury 8, South 4. Defence, 15 metres out from the line. This is the last. And Lamb goes for the bomb. It's a great bomb. The sun is in the eyes of South Sydney. Scott Wilson floats it inside. And Craig Polamounder, he puts the icing on the cake. Well, that was a judicious kick by the little master. He kicked it down into that corner. And South Sydney had sunshine in their eyes all the way. I don't want to put a go slow on the try, but I, for mine, Matthew Ryan is offside. I had a very close look. He snuck in front of Terry Lamb. He goes up, he contests the football. With Brett Dallas, the ball bounced kindly for Scott Wilson. A beautiful pass back inside to Craig Polamounder. But again, I think it should have been a penalty for South Sydney. The man at the back there, who does play at the football, was offside. Canterbury, well, they've got no thoughts about that now. Craig Polamounder had a tough start to this game, but he now increases their lead. Conversion. A simple one for Darrell Halligan. And uh, he extends the Canterbury lead now to 14 points to four here at the football stadium. That's correct from Stephen Clark. Craig Field runs to the 10 metre line, floats the pass out. Jason Bell gets it on and it's Paul Mellor. Paul Mellor gets a try. Beautifully done. Mark oh, Craig Field is a good player, isn't he? Yeah, very flat passing and again the option taken to run the football on the last tackle. And it worked because Craig Field went to the defence. He saw that there might have been an opportunity out wide. He looked shaped to kick. That put the Canterbury defence in two minds. You see a couple of Canterbury players already going back. Beautiful hands from Jason Bell. And again, a flat pass to Paul Mellor. But they put doubt in the minds of the Canterbury defence. Two Canterbury players overread it. One was Craig Polamounter. He was going back to the try line. So too was Brett Dallas. Mellor, he benefited at the end of the back line. Well, Duncan McRae is taking the kick. Not a bad looking kick, but it's wide. So 14 points to eight, a more respectable score line for the Rabbitohs, who trail now by six. So. 22 metres out, looks very good. Straight between the uprights. That's just what the doctor ordered, and 14 to 10 in favour of Canterbury now. Run if successful, and the odds are that it will be. About 26 metres out, not too far up centre. We should get this. And there it goes, straight between the uprights for Darrell Halligan and for the Canterbury fans. They rejoice, they lead by six now. This time he goes out looking for a runner. The service hasn't been that good, he keeps it alive through McRae. Now it's back to Craig Field, he bumps out of a tackle, and Craig Field! He gets a try right under the black dot. So they'll convert and will be level at 16 all. And you ask the question, how long could Canterbury hold out? South City have had a lot of possession down here. Aaron McLean went across, looking for an inside runner, kept the ball alive. McRae threw a very good ball there, cut out one player. Jason Smith came up with the bad miss tackle. Both Darren Smith and Craig Polamanda were in cover defence, but they were a fair way behind that front line, and they were put out by that missed tackle of Jason Smith. They expected him to make the tackle. When he missed it, that's it there. They were still coming across and, and Field changed the direction which he can do so well to score under the posts. Shane Wilson from right in front. Third goal kicker used. It looks like they might have found the right one. 16 points all. 
seven metres from the line. Ben Gillies, the dummy half. First receiver, Terry Lamb. There goes the shot. It's successful, I think. Yes, it's a goal. And Canterbury, they grab the lead again. 17-16, a field goal to Terry Lamb. Well, incredible stuff here. No pressure at Terry Lamb at all. They were under all sorts of pressure in defence, South Sydney, so they couldn't get up quickly. Tackle. 12 metres from the line. Reardon through to Ben Gillies. On now to Darren Smith. They've got to score, surely. And Darren Smith goes all the way, even though he had players left, right and centre. Canterbury, they win the day. 21-16, pick to come. And I would say pure relief for Darren Smith, his teammates, Chris Anderson, and the Canterbury fans out here at the Sydney Football Stadium today. Daryl Halligan has kicked four out of five. I like it off the boot, and he likes it over the bar. Terry Lamb. Vital Winfield Cup encounter. The Premier's Brisbane without a win in the opening three rounds up against Eastern Suburbs. Russell Fairfax reports. It was not to be a good Friday for Eastern Suburbs. Up against defending Premier's Brisbane, and with both sides yet to register a win, the pressure was on. East were the first to crack. Hounds swept on it, hounds away. They chase, but they chase in vain. And the world number one winger back in his favourite position. Lazarus had already forgotten his warning from the league as the Broncos pushed the scoreline to 10 0 with some trademark backline play. Going back to go forward, you might say. Renoff gets inside and away. Renoff will score. Brisbane went further ahead after some fine footwork from 5'8", John Pratt. Another try. East captain Craig Salvatore laid down the law and then laid on East first try. And it all started with a classic step. Eight minutes later, the Roosters were in again. John Pratt was the man going low. From 16-0 down, East had fought back and at half time, the score was 16-12 to the Broncos and the game there for the taking. East came out firing in the second half that came up with laughable errors, like failing to tap the ball to restart play when they had great field position. Looking ready to fall apart, the Broncos rallied and scored a super try. Oh, how, how beautiful is that? How good is that? Another try to Brisbane, and it gave them a handy lead. But the Broncos weren't finished. Renouf grabbed number three around the corner from Andrew G. The scoreline read 36 to 12 when Alan Langer and Willie Kahn worked to kick and chase. And Willie Kahn upside down. On the other wing, Michael Hancock scored the Broncos' eighth try and his 252nd point for the Queensland based club. Steve Runoff gave Brisbane what they'd been missing, scoring three tries and having a hand in plenty more. The final scoreline, humiliating for East. 44 to 12 to Brisbane. Quickly programmed St George has sent the alarm bells ringing in the Winfield Cup, an easy victory over Balmain at Cogra. 46 to 6, a deadly cocktail of youth and experience. Two informed sides, but it was the Dragons finding holes in the Tigers' defence early. Which way he needs to look left, he looks right. The Saints' back line had found the gaps, the forwards went through them. Brown to the line and he should break through the fullback and does. It was Brown's first try of the year. Minutes later, the pacey hooker went one better. He's left, he's got to look for him, but Lyons is there too, and inside it goes. Score. 12 points in as many minutes. The Tigers' desperation would cost them dearly. As Paul Sirinan headed to the sin bin, Brown crossed again. Brown goes try, easy try. By the time Sirinan had returned, St George had scored another. Phil Blake making it 24 nil at half time. Blake's impact on the game had only just begun. After the break, he put Bradley over. The Dragons 28 nil. Then the Saints pivot had a hand in another try. A hand he'd rather forget. It's Mundane giving chase, but away goes Morgan Edwards. Morgan Edwards over the 20, over the 10, and the intercept try. Balmain were finally on the board, but Blake wasn't finished yet. He gives a pass, and Maybach's going to sprint in. Will he make it to the line? Yes. The second game of the round had again passed the 40-point mark. The incredible talents of Big Gordon Tallis capping an eight-try performance that left smiles all round at Cogroval. On nine, right after the news. In other round four results, Cronulla thumped West 36-10. A 20-all draw between Illawarra and Souths. Parramatta defeated the Gold Coast 26-24. And a tight win for Manly over Newcastle 13-10.
Manly flew into Marathon on the wings of a 58-point thrashing over Wests, but the Knights are steely opposition at home. Robbie McCormack showing an iron will. Manly's Mark Carroll and Newcastle's Paul Harrigan both hunted scalps, the chief after a new headdress of sea eagle feathers. A field goal and penalty from the boot of Andrew Johns gave Newcastle a 7-2 lead before a fleet-footed Terry Hill delivered a line ball to Steve Menzies. Menzies streaming towards the line, he's going to score for Manly. Johns persisted with the one-point theory in the second half, but with the scores locked at 10-all, Cliff Lyons went one better. Manly lead, 11 points to 10. A Matthew Ridge penalty gave Manly a 13-10 lead, and despite late fireworks from Terry Hill and Harrigan, Manly feathers remained unruffled. Oh, Harrigan and Terry Hill. Oh, he's punched him in the chest. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. It looks like it will be a long, cold winter for West. After being thrashed this afternoon by Cronulla, they're now conceded 102 points in two matches. It appeared that the Magpies had shaken off last week's awful hiding by Manly. Their ball control and attack clicked for a 10-6 half-time lead. But that was hardly the platform for victory. West went missing as the Sharks cut loose. A six-try second-half romp, including two in two minutes. Andrew Weddinghausen landed two late in the game. Cronulla home, 36 points to 10. At Steelers Stadium, Illawarra delighted the hometown crowd with a 16-point rush in the opening half an hour against South. The Rabbits bounced back to trail 16-10 at half-time. Still without a Premiership point this season, South needed a big second half. 20-all after Tony Mestroff's try was converted. Then with a minute to go, John Simon's super defence cut down Tyron Smith, the match ending in a draw. And a great start by the Gold Coast over Parramatta. A glut of possession had them in front, 18-8. But 10 minutes from full time, the Eels made it a game. Levelling at 18 all, Paul Clark sealed the Parramatta victory 26-24. Peter Overton, National 9 News. Easter greetings were fierce at North Sydney Oval. Mario Fennec wiping out Stephen Boss's game after just five minutes. Boss can't get up. The Penrith players were furious, but referee Ward said fair tackle. We may hear more. Boss was stretched off. The Bears were grisly. Good work by Caruana sending Matt Sears on his way. He's got a big headache here. And away goes Sears. Penrith Steve Carter has a lethal right foot step. He split the line with ease. He won't have the pace. Who's coming with him? It's Kirk on the outside looking for the ball. Was good, but Freeman goes all the way. But the Bears were showing plenty of flair. A gem of a pass from Florimo, putting Norths up by 12 points to four. Oh, magical pass! Brad Fittler has a pretty good step of his own, but just failed to ground the ball. And the plunge towards the line, but held up. The Panthers kept the pressure up, and the Bears cracked. Alexander inside for a rampaging Graham Mackay, 14-10 at the break. There's Graham Mackay coming in. A shocking midfield bomb from Brad Fittler put Penrith on the back foot. David Fairley drove home the advantage. And David Fairley scored! Panthers replacement prop Phil Adamson showed plenty of strength and determination, beating four Bears to score. Carter's with him! He doesn't need Carter! The Panthers simply lost their way. Man of the match Greg Florimo showing all his skills guiding North to a 26 points to 16 victory. Oh, that's George Best! At Seagull. Moved into the Winfield Cup's top five with a 17-12 victory over Canberra at Belmore Oval today. The Bulldogs withstood a sustained second half comeback by the Raiders that saw the Green Machine score three tries to two, but they still went down. Multicultural day at Belmore Oval. 24,000 football fans from many nations celebrating Easter Monday. And the party started early for Canterbury. Centre Jared McCracken setting up first points after just eight minutes. That's a classic try! Two penalty goals to Daryl Halligan gave the Bulldogs a ten-point lead before Canberra's backline slipped into action. Wait, steps inside and scores! Canterbury captain Terry Lamb, playing his 297th game, just six short of the record, set up the Bulldogs' second try after a neat ball from Dean Pay. Dillies goes in to score! Leading 16-4, 
the Bulldogs right on half time gave themselves a 13 point buffer again that man Terry Lamb behind 17-4 more bad news for the green machine Laurie Daly injures his knee and misses the entire second half in typical fashion Canberra scored first half of the break moving the ball from one side of the field to the other Mullins goes down for the corner the Raiders were on the way back when Ricky Stewart found Jason Krugger to make the score 17-12 to the Bulldogs here comes a try but there was no change to that scoreline as the Bulldogs' defence worked overtime for the last 20 minutes to keep the Raiders out. Russell Fairfax, 10 News. Parramatta's the Winfield Cup. Parramatta at home to the informed Saints. It was St George 5'8", Phil Blake's ability to sniff out a try that paved the way for the Dragons' victory. 16-8 over a pretty committed Eels outfit. A minute's silence is a mark of respect for former referee Dennis Braybrook. Then it was on. Just 58 seconds into the match, Noel Goldthorpe put the ball in the air. Brett Plowman misreads it, and Saints are away to a dream start. And Talis is immediately there to pounce on it. Looks inside, the pass looked forward to Heron. It goes on for Blake, and Blake will score. The Dragons were almost in a game when Coyne got outside his man to send fullback Rod Maven away. Maven. Blackett goes across to make the tackle, five out. A Parramatta penalty goal made it 6-2. Another great build-up by the Dragons, but it was wasted when the final pass to Ricky Walford went forward. By Michael Butner went close, dragged down centimetres from the goal line. The score at half-time, 6-2 to Saints. Ten minutes after the restart, Phil Blake produced his trademark chip and chase to put Saints up 12-2. Blake will get a rebound, he does, and Blake... He puts that Blake magic. But the Dragons weren't finished. Again, some more Phil Blake magic for Rod Maven to touch down. And then Maven, Maven gets it down. Behind 16-2, the Eels finally got it all together. Lola scores for Paramount. Oh, what? That try made the score 16-8, and that's how it stayed. Three tries to one to Saints. Phil Blake, the difference between the two sides. Rugby League thrashings continue. Today, Canterbury rolling Newcastle at Belmore. The Bulldogs won 42 to 18, scoring seven tries to three. Darrell Halligan finished with 22 points. Canterbury is known as the family club, and today nothing was truer. The Smith brothers, Jason and Darren, kick-started the scoreboard. He's onside, it's a try. It appeared nothing could stop the dogs. Fella. Except a lapse in defence, Jamie Ainsco landed the equaliser. Terry Lamb chasing, 10 metres out and he won't catch him Terry Lamb. Six all was as close as the Knights got. A Terry Lamb bomb usually pays a dividend. Away it goes, back inside to Simon Gillies, for the line and he crashes. Halligan's boot added the cream. But the flags are up. His clean-up work on the wing, bringing an extra bonus. Things are out and Halligan's got that try. An 18-6 half-time lead was added to by Scott Wilson. Wilson's there, beautiful. For the Newcastle faithful, a Matthew Johns try was all class. Stepping still. But the door had shut as the Bulldogs confirmed they will take plenty of catching this winter. Stumbles over the line. B-League's match of the day is between Brisbane and Penrith. That game on nine right after the news. In the other round, five results. Canberra 30 defeated Illawarra 16. South thrashed West 28-8. East far too good for Balmain, 40 to 10, and North remain undefeated after beating the Gold Coast, 36 to 8. North started as you'd expect, full of running and dare on their home ground, and the Gold Coast couldn't hang on. 15 minutes in, the Seagulls' defence cracked. The Bears' Tony Ray snatching a four-pointer with plenty more to follow throughout the afternoon. North's ran at will in the final 40 minutes with Sears, Taylor, and Caruana, just some of the players getting across the line. North home, 36 to 8. In Canberra, it was the clash of the big men. With the Raiders, John Lomax coming off second best against Peter Johnson. The Raiders are looking at the incident and whether or not an elbow or raised forearm was used. Illawarra opened the scoring, but some of the hits stirred the Raiders' blood. Canberra came storming at the Steelers with Osborne leading the charge. The Raiders delighted with four tries in the first half to lead 22-10 at the break. Illawarra began confidently in the second half, but the green machine was again in top gear in a strong all-round performance. In the end, comfortable winners, 
30 points to 16. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. It's taken five weeks, but the Roosters have won their first match, beating Balmain, who had more than Edwards sent off for a high tackle. Rod Silver's 30th minute break was blunted by Edwards. The winger was marched, Silver suffered severe concussion. The Roosters went to half-time, leading 10-8. It was as close as it got. East devoured the Tigers with five more second-half tries to win by 30 points. Souring Balmain's afternoon even more, John Elias reported for this hit. Western suburbs still can't get a grip on things. It was another awful afternoon as Craig Field cranked up South Sydney with some super defence. And he scored two of the Rabbits' four tries in the final 11 minutes of the game to secure victory. Last night, the Manly Express was at full speed against Cronulla, the Sea Eagles enjoying a 14-6 lead. Arthur Sharps of the Saturday Night Specialists, and with 25 minutes to go, Andrew Eddinghausen began a personal repair job. E.T. crossed twice in a four-try final burst to set up the Cronulla victory. The ground record of more than 20,000 delighted, well, most of them anyway. Penrith and Brisbane will play for their points in Nine's big game right after the news. Best today in disposing of Penrith at the QE2 Stadium. Weakened by injuries to key players, the Panthers were no match for the Broncos, who showed the kind of form that made them premiers. The biggest crowd of the season welcomed home former Bronco Trevor Gilmeister, but that was the end of Brisbane's hospitality. Going to. Platt's fancy feet and Alan Can's more direct approach exposed some glaring Penrith defensive deficiencies. Score! Hancock! And once the Broncos are on a roll, it's showtime. Clap is there, got to pass the Johns, then to come, and another try. When giant fullback Paul Hoff fielded a kick and sliced straight through the Panthers' line, Brisbane took a 22-2 half-time lead and the game was decided. Oh, the big fella! Look at him go! A hat-trick of tries to the world's best winger capped the Broncos' most impressive performance of the season. Referee says no and gives the try. In Sydney remain unbeaten in the Rugby League Premiership after a thrilling one-point win this afternoon over Brisbane at ANZ Stadium. The Bears won 11-10, both sides scoring two tries each. A Jason Taylor field goal, the difference. 36,000 one-eyed fans backed Brisbane to break the Bears' unbeaten run, but none of them bet on Sean Hoppy. There goes Sean Hoppy racing away, and he's caught everybody napping. This confrontation with Gary Larson KO'd Willie Kahn, the world's best winger, chauffeur-driven from the field, before Larson set up a free ride for David Fairley. David Fairley racing for the line, Wendell Saylor can't get him. Up 10-0, Norths went a man down early in the second half when Larson was sin-bin, Langer finding a tiny hole in the 12-man defence. Mr Langer, Langer for the line, Langer's over! Jason Taylor booted Norths a vital one-pointer, but Julian O'Neill gave Brisbane another four. Langer, inside to O'Neill, O'Neill for the line, he's there! Madison reduced the deficit to one, but the Bears held off a late-charging Brisbane to keep their undefeated record intact. Last night, Balmain and Penrith went west. Paul Sirenin searching for scalps. Oh, big hit by what a big hit over the top by Sirenin. Penrith scored all the points, but at a price. An ankle injury put captain John Cartwright on ice, so Brad Fittler turned up the heat. That's an enormous effort by Fittler. Graham Mackay sent a none too subtle message to state of origin selectors, and when Danny Farrah's support play was finally rewarded, Phil Gould had 24 reasons to smile. Andrew McKinlay. National 9 News. The Bulldogs outclassed Illawarra and Easts too strong for Parramatta. Scott Mahon sent off for the Eels. Only the Braves gave South much hope of downing Manly, but Shane Wilson's early try lifted the Rabbits. They were fired up for an upset, but when Craig Field was set off for this tackle on Jack Ellsgood, most expected the lead to be short-lived. Cliff Lyons also went on report for going high, but it was South that continued to dazzle, despite being a man down. This one of the tries of the season. Wilson goes for his second, gets it inside, McGall! 
Leading 10-4 at half time, the South Spirit and Courage slowly gave way to a full strength Manly side. Menzies and Carroll were brilliant in the forwards, while Terry Hill led the way out wide. The Sea Eagles getting home 28-13. Illawarra started in great style in their match against Canterbury. Rod Wishart making an impressive return from injury. The Steelers held a 12-8 lead at half time. But the Bulldogs took control in the second half. Two tries within the first five minutes, paving the way for a 26-16 victory. At the Sydney Football Stadium, Parramatta was left with just 12 men when Scott Mann was sent off for this late tackle. The Eels, though, led 10-0 at one stage and looked set to steamroll the Roosters. But East, led by Craig Salvatore, overpowered Parramatta in the second term to put together back-to-back -back victories. Warren Sim, 7 Nightly News. Johnny Lang had plenty of reason to look concerned at Marathon Stadium. His world-beating Sharks faced a rejuvenated Knights who crossed in the seventh minute. The Chief was limbering up for a stint on the front lines, his and try more power than poise. It wasn't all smooth sailing though, Newcastle's Crossing Jamie Ainsco may be visiting Phillips Street Jane tomorrow after this hit on Eon Crossan that stunned his Cronulla counterpart. The Sharks remain trialless, their few That's promising raids thwarted by committed defence. Matthew Smith. Johns though didn't the face any resistance Jack wrapping up the 17 point win. At Cogra, the Saints ran in seven tries against a shell-shocked Gold Coast. Phil Blake yet again in the thick of the action. <laughs> Leading 22-10 at the break, the home side didn't let up as the tri-fest continued in the second half with Goldthorpe, Mabon, Goulet and Heron all breaking the Seagulls' defence. <laughs> Captain Mark Coyne recorded the softest try of round six. The Gold Coast back to the drawing board. The Raiders were set back on their heels early at Campbelltown, but steadied to smash West's 40 to 24. Ricky Stewart engineered the fight back, scoring Canberra's first try and setting up another three. But he left the field with a hamstring injury just after half time. 5'8th Jason Croker bagged a hat trick of tries for the Raiders, capping off an impressive victory and keeping West in the doldrums. The points table has the Bears still out in front, Saints and the Bulldogs next, Cronulla and the Raiders make up the five. Penrith and Manly just one point behind, the Premiers though struggling to keep in touch. It was called timeout. I'd prefer to believe that it was the latter. I think the ball just fell off the mound, didn't it? <laughs> 20, 20, I just took my eyes off it, is that exactly right? Right, I'll run with that. Here comes Taylor then, and look at it, straight over the dot. An ominous sign for the Dragons, 2-0 after 15 for the Bears. Got a hold for one more. Goldthorpe, grubbing kick, and the Bears come up with it, but it's a penalty. To St George, right in front. Well, something had to break somewhere. There's Craig Wilson being spoken to questioning Greg McCallum about the penalty another good little kick put through by Goldthorpe he had good chases outside him Mundine was coming through at speed a fair discussion going on here here's Goldthorpe going to the line it comes off a North Sydney player that's I think it was Gary Larson that was actually who impeded the chaser yeah Larson I remember at the start of last year when there was no Tony Ray, Craig Wilson was the deputy captain. Heron from right in front. He doesn't miss them. Neither does Taylor for that matter. And that's why it's two all after 34 at Codra. They don't go to Taylor. They come the blind side. And Maybon again perfectly placed. I don't think Taylor's too happy about that either. He was well positioned for another shot of the field goal and time is running out with 10 minutes to go. And they decided to have a little blindside play, which never worked. Taylor has to step, gets the shot in, and he gets it! Taylor breaks the deadlock! Well, it wasn't great pressure on Jason Taylor. He was able to step back inside. One person came up in Brown. Barnhill was the next. That had to be the play, and it was just tiredness from the St George players not getting through. Beat possession. 
and George do get the football, they must be sure that they have to travel 90 to 100 metres. Silly pass. Soden was able to recover what was a stupid pass. Will it be stupid? No, it will not. It's a try for Matthew Toshak. Uh, has only had the one shot at goal, which is quite incredible. Here he is with a difficult assignment. Nothing's difficult for Jason Taylor. And they've got the same scoreline as last year. 9-2 to the Bears. A three By then, the match was well within the Broncos' keeping. Meanwhile, on Friday night, the Bears maintained their unbeaten record down in St George. Despite a full round of AFL in Melbourne, Brisbane and Balmain still managed to attract more than 14,000 fans to Optus Oval. And early, Balmain looked set to make a game of it. And it's Will Robinson racing away for the try. The Tigers led 8-0 until Steve Ranoff cut loose out wide. Of course, the Balmain general manager with big smiles on their face. Here goes Ranoff. Ranoff's off. Away goes Ranoff. Comes to the fullback. Steps straight past him. Left him pointless. He's an amazing player, Steve Ranoff. What? The send-off of Martin Masella for a late high tackle added to the Tigers' woes. And with a man down, they were no match for the Premiers. Brisbane steamrolling their way to a 36-14 victory of league in nine's match of the day Canberra hosts Manly right after the news in other round seven results Penrith 34 defeated Parramatta 10 South 16 over Cronulla 14 East thrashed the Gold Coast 30 to 12 and Newcastle 35 rolled Illawarra 12 in the battle of the sister cities it was Newcastle who showed a will of steel with Matthew Johns laying on try number one Illawarra hit back quickly when good ball movement sent Roy on his way. Two went Nigel Roy and Nigel Roy's going to score the four point of the Illawarra Steelers. Butterfield's hit on Wishart produced Butterfingers and from that tackle the Knights stormed to the line through Glanville. The onslaught continued in the second half. The Knights simply had too many form players on the day with the Johns boys, Glanville and Butterfield all standouts at Marathon Stadium. At Parramatta Oval, Graham Mackay went on a point-scoring picnic as Penrith steamrolled the Eels. The giant winger scored three tries and kicked five goals for a personal tally of 22 points in the 34-10 win. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. At the football stadium, both Cronulla and South swapped the lead before the Rabbitohs finally came away with a two-point win. It was a start full of zip. Darren Trindle giving the Rabbits the opening try. Two penalties topped up the South's half-time lead to 10-2. But the home side stalled at that point. The defence went missing as Cronulla scored two tries. The second came from Adam Marr. The Sharks going to a 14-10 lead. But Trindle still had a full tank of energy. This break set up Tallahai. The score, 14 all. Craigfield's conversion made it 16-14, South holding Cronulla off for the final 12 minutes. East swamped the Gold Coast, sprinting to a 16-0 lead in the opening half an hour. Danger man, danger all right. Four point danger, he's over for an opening try. The Coast turned that on its head, surprising the Roosters with two tries to trail 16-12 at the break. Great start with a pass to Peacock and Peacock's over underneath the post. But the fight back failed to hit home. In the 67th minute, East ran away with the match, their third win in a row. Yes, he's passed away to Brendan Hall. Hall going for the line. He's over underneath the post. The questionable send-off of Jason Croker could prevent Canberra from handing out a comprehensive beating to Manly at the Bruce Stadium today. With most of their stars already out injured and a player down for the second half, the determined Raiders simply embarrassed the much-vaunted Manly lineup. Manly were virtually unbackable favourites with as much as six and a half points start being offered to Canberra supporters. Crunching tackles from the Canberra forwards quickly showed Manly what was in store and David Boyle confirmed it. And it's a try! When Mal Meninga found himself with the sight of the corner, it didn't matter that he had Manly defenders in front of him. He'll score! Meninga! Leading 10-0 at the break, the Raiders on resumption were dealt a body blow when referee Graham Annesley sent off Jason Croker. They sent him off. There's a send-off here. Despite being a man down, Canberra kept the Seagulls in their quarter until a dubious penalty finally gave them some room to move. Danny Moore fooling the defence. Danny Moore, he'll score. But Canberra stormed back. Walters, Walters, Walters is over. End of the 
post. A manly handling error allowing winger Ken Nagus to show a clean pair of heels. And that puts the nail in the coffin. Captain Mal Meninga powering over to add insult to injury and putting up a perfect Meninga. ball for Brett Mullins. At the Seagull, a suspected broken arm and half Craig Polamanta, a serious ankle injury. The Bulldogs struggle without the pair against a much improved West for a 22 to 16 victory. Both teams had a nervous start, but once again, West looked set for further embarrassment as dropped passes and bombed opportunities kept coming their way. Canterbury lost halfback Craig Polamanta early in the first half with an ankle injury, but it was his replacement, Kevin Moore, who got the dogs on the board. West hit back after a long cutout pass from Langmack. But McCracken answered that after Tierney threw a half-break pass. The Magpies didn't throw in the towel. Sadara showed his speed off the mark to get West within four points at the break. Canterbury suffered a major blow when they lost Terry Lamb ten minutes into the second half. A suspected broken arm has shattered the Bulldogs' premiership campaign as their captain is expected to be out for six to eight weeks. How does it feel? Are you worried about it? No. <laughs> too late now. I can't worry about it too much. I think it's broken. With Lamb missing, West hit the lead after Thompson and Willis combined down the touchline. The try gave the Magpies a two-point lead, but the victory dance was premature. Jason Smith worked the corner for Canterbury. The scrambling defence just couldn't keep up with the attack. A try late in the game sealed the result for Canterbury. It was a hard-earned win at a very high price. After the long weekend round of matches, Norths remain at the top of the Premiership table. Canterbury is outright second. The His traditional rivals at the SCG, a recipe for a rip terror. Paul Sirenan shrugged it off, but that was just the start. As Balmain get a penalty here, the natives are restless. Been pretty physical and aggressive this opening couple of minutes. Sinclair limped off. There was plenty in every hit. Gillette lucky to avoid serious repercussions. Steve Edmed bloodied again, his teammates making up for his departure. 14 minutes had gone when the Tigers opened up some feeble defence. Balmain on the attack, Robinson for Gillette, he gets inside, that's a try. Balmain led 6-0, Sirenan giving as much as he got. Him. South replied, again bad defence out wide. Carrying injury, Sinclair does well, throws the dummy, goes back in foul, the Rabbits are going to score, Jason Bell, Jason Bell. The handling at times was moderate, South. make a knock on it. but Burke produced the ace the Tigers required. And he gets the penalty. Up by two at half time, Balmain's lead extended, Brasher magnificent. Brasher. Brasher, like a will of the west, Robinson, yes, Robinson scores. A few minutes later, Graham Lyons scrambled over, the Tigers were in front by 12. Might be the end for South, Lyons trying to get around, oh, I think he's got it down, it's a try. Told to throw the ball around, the answer is brilliant, Craig Field having a blinder. Setting them up was easy, his boot, the goods as well. Oh, that's a beauty! It was edge of the seat stuff, the Rabbitohs attacking, the defence lacklustre at times, Bell's kick put them within two. South are going to score! Terry Hermanson! Big Hermanson gets the try! The South's comeback was inspiring, but Elias utilised the enthusiasm, a prepared lob for Brash. It's been pre-arrived, oh, Brasher! Brasher! That's magical stuff! The black and goals held steady as South poured on the pressure. Twice they went close. Nine minutes to go. South had pounded the line. Finally, Balmain gave in. Craigfield over the halfway. Inside ball. David Penner. David Penner. He'll score. Yes. Could the Tigers hold on against a rampant opposition? This was the South solution to the question.
In the end, South had made a wonderful second half comeback worth a photo opportunity. The SCG offering another memorable attacking showdown. South Sydney defeating Balmain. Avenge last week's big loss to Canberra with a hard-fought win against Penrith today. The Seagulls scored five tries to four in an impressive all-round performance. With city and country teams named tomorrow night, Manly's wingers must have impressed selectors. Hancock crossed first, and a flying Jack Ellsgood landed on a Cliff Lions grubber. Try time for Manly! Hancock second gave Manly a lopsided scoreline before Brad Fittler opted to go against the flow. He's done it all himself! But a communication breakdown between Robbie Beckett and Greg Alexander summed up Penrith's first half, Eldsgood's opportunism giving Manly a 16-point lead. Penrith's fight back began with touchdowns to brothers Phil and Matt Adamson, and with Manly's Matt Ridge sin-binned, that communication problem suddenly became ESP. At 2018, Phil Gould had a glimmer of hope, but that was soon dashed by man of the match, David O'Donnell. League players tonight as they await the announcement of the Sydney and country origin teams. The selectors are meeting right now. In nine's match of the day, North host Newcastle. That comes up right after the news. The other results in Canberra 24 beat Parramatta 10. Brisbane 34 thrashed Cronulla 2. Canterbury 44 defeated the Gold Coast 20. An 18-all draw between East and West. And the big upset, Illawarra 24 kept St George scoreless. Illawarra went into the match under enormous pressure. A run of injuries had resulted in a run of losses. But that was all put to rest against St George. The Steelers' form had been rusty, but on their home ground, they were the ones breathing fire against the Dragons and led 12-0 at the break. In the past, Illawarra has folded in the second half, but not today. In all, the Steelers raced in four tries to nil in one of the biggest upsets of the year. Despite losing Daly and Stewart, the Raiders still had too much firepower for Parramatta. Meninga was back to his menacing best as he pushed, shoved and carried defenders all day. Meninga was in one of his special moods. He took on the defence at every opportunity and was simply too big a handful for the opposition. The Yields had no luck, losing two players, first Tollett and then Galbraith to serious leg injuries. Both had to be stretched off. Para's defence tightened after the break while their enthusiasm also picked up. But in the end, Canberra got home comfortably scoring five tries to two. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. 34,000 were at ANZ Stadium to see Cronulla get in the way of the Brisbane steamroller. The Broncos rolled out a familiar brand of football, Steve Renoff bearing Cronulla with the first of Brisbane's six tries. But the day's low point came with Gavin Allen's hit on Paul Green. Allen reported Green knocked out. Michael Hancock finished with two tries in what was a busy afternoon for the scorers. At Belmore, Canterbury might have been missing playmaker Terry Lamb, but not the recipe on how to attack. The Dogs pounded the Gold Coast line. Jared McCracken finished with three touchdowns and several productive birds. The Coast lost Ray Herring for a high hit and the game by 24 points. A scrappy match at the stadium, East looked home with an eight-point lead 20 minutes from full time. But West scrambled back, Glenn Grief went over and Andrew Leeds kicked a penalty to make it 18-all at the siren. So to our ladder, and Canterbury is on top from North, Canberra, St George and Brisbane. The Bears and Newcastle play for their points right after the news. As fickle as the weather. Early on, the Knights looked like becoming another statistic on the Bears' unstoppable climb up the ladder, with two early North's tries. Goes into a hole! Gets it away for Kostak! Ten points down, Newcastle began to take risks. Robbie O'Davis kicking on the second tackle with excellent results. While Harrigan went for a helicopter ride, Russell Wire set about evening the scores. Right on half-time, Matthew Johns stepped through the defence to put Butterfield in under the posts. On resumption, a brief storm seemed to extinguish the spark on both sides. North's the first to fire again. Toshak looking for another try. He'll get it. 
Greg Florimo then beat four men to put the Bears back in front. Keeps going, Florimo! But with 10 minutes to go, Newcastle's big prop forward, Mark Sargent, showed great agility to seal a night's win. Sargent, they won't stop him! At the Bruce State of Origin selector, John Raper says more country players can expect a call-up to the state side after their victory over Sydney last night. The country boys weren't expected to dominate, but they did in the 22-2 victory. A light show marked Origin football's return to Newcastle, but the real fireworks came on field. Country's John Simon calf rope Paul Sirenen, Chief Paul Harrigan shed more than sweat and tears, while fullback Brett Mullins laid it all on the line. Country's commitment profited through Dean Pay, Brad Clyde getting the pay off. Bradley Clyde! A try! Yes! Six minutes later, Simon sent the Canterbury second rower searching for his own pay dirt. What a game Dean Pay is having! Simon proved a perfect replacement for an injured Ricky Stewart. This kick almost tailor-made for a flying Rod Wishart. Wishart is going fast with Taylor! Taylor cleans it up! Brad Fittler combined with Tim Brasher, but the fullback fell just short of reviving Sydney. A last grasp by Glenn Lazarus denied Mark Carroll a certain four points and Country came back with a stacked blindside that put Ken Nagus in the clear. And Country really ripping into the city! The result was Country's biggest winning margin since 1961, the 22-2 scoreline damaging several city reputations. As a result, selected John Raper vows Country... ...handed North Sydney at second straight loss with a seven-point victory at Caltex Field. The Sharks won 21-14. The Bears struggling with injured players and the second-half send-off of Matt Toshak. The demands of rep football sideline David Fairley and DT. Gavin Jones joined them a minute into the game. While he slept it off, the Sharks were wide-eyed. Bennett's kick fingertipped by Hicks for a try. North retaliated. Florimo's duck and weave, perfect. Joy to despair in one hit for Fennick, he made a horizontal exit, while Larson was lucky to stand up after this. Just 60 seconds later, he threw the pass which put the Bears 12-10 in front at the break. Pops it for Sears. Lovely play by Larson. For a moment, I thought he was going to go too far. But he... Simple by-the-book play soon had the Sharks back in front, 16-14. Mistakes didn't help Norse, nor the dismissal of Matt Toshak for a high tackle. I believe that arm did the damage. With 10 minutes to go, the seal of the Cronulla, half Paul Green finding Neon Crossan right in the corner. A late field goal put the icing on the Cronulla victory. Peter Overton, National 9 News. Today is between Canterbury and St George from the stadium, that game right after the news. In other results, Balmain upset Newcastle, 26-22. Penrith, 38, home against West, 24. Illawarra thrashed East, 34-8. Souths, 20, defeated Parramatta, 4. Gold Coast shocked Canberra with an 8-4 victory. And Manly rolled Brisbane, 21-11. Both Brisbane and Manly loved to throw the leather around. Renoff got in trouble early for throwing his hands around. Nineteen minutes in and the Broncos launched a familiar raid. Langer chipped, Sailor soared and Brisbane was away. Just before half time, Manly looked certain to score. The ball just had to go wide, but Hancock's anticipation saved the Premiers. Manly stayed There's in touch the throughout the game, courtesy of Matthew Ridge. But Hill put the result beyond doubt when he scored what looked a very doubtful try. Oh, you've got to be kidding. At Leichhardt Oval, it was heart attack material for both coaches. But Michael Hill did extremely well. Newcastle was reduced to 12 when Tony Butterfield was sent off for his not-so-gentle genuflect. And his knee. By half-time, Balmain led 16-2. Will Robinson's going to claim it. Newcastle came back in the second half to lead by two points with just five minutes remaining. The Tigers looked shot when Carroll also got his marching orders. But then, in the dying stages, Balmain struck back to record a nerve-wracking four-point win. At Campbelltown, it was a league feast. In all, 12 tries were scored, most by Penrith. Freeman crossed for four, and the Panthers went home handsome winners. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. Believe it or not, Gold Coast led Canberra all afternoon at Seagull Stadium to win by four points.
Even though the Stuart Daly connection was missing and Clyde was injured in the 13th minute, Canberra was favourite to steamroll the coast. Instead, second rower Wayne Bartram started the home side assault. Seagulls led 4-0 at half-time and extended that to 8-0 soon after. Albert Fullerby pulled it back to 8-4, Canberra then spilling a chance for at least a draw right on full-time. East had five players with suspected glandular fever, but Illawarra agreed the match should proceed despite the risk. Six all at half-time, the Roosters didn't have a show in the second. The Steelers put on five tries, home by 26 points. South Sydney halfback Craig Field was brilliant against Parramatta. He backed up for a second just three minutes later. Darrell Trindle kick-started it, Field finished. But the 16-point win was soured with the news that captain Dean Schifolitti faces a season-ending knee reconstruction. Our ladder has Canterbury and St George playing for their points right after the news. Safely in the five, Norse and Canberra, while Manly and Penrith are threatened by the Dragons. Proving too strong for St George today. For the Dragons, it was their third defeat in a row. Canterbury bustling to an easy win in front of 20,000 fans at the Sydney Football Stadium. After squandering an early chance, Canterbury quickly made amends when Jason Smith powered his way through some weak defence to score in the sixth minute. Solid tackling by the Kiwi centre Jared McCracken forced St George into errors. And again McCracken takes credit on. But the Dragons kept coming back for more. Three of them driving back on Gordon Dallas. Eventually they were rewarded with Graham Bradley crossing out wide. Bradley! Bradley scores! At right on half time, Jason Smith opened up a hole to put replacement Robert Ralph through. And Canterbury 14-6 ahead. Ralph! He gets the try! On resumption, the Dragons played with more flair, but unable to hold the ball, Canterbury swooped to put the result beyond a doubt. Matthew Ryan, they'll score if McCracken gets into the clear. Get into the clear. I'll tell him, Andy, well. At Brookvale, Ash to his fourth consecutive defeat today when... Canberra, while Manly and Penrith are threatened by the Dragons. Proving too strong for St George today. For the Dragons, it was their third defeat in a row. Canterbury bustling to an easy win in front of 20,000 fans at the Sydney Football Stadium. After squandering an early chance, Canterbury quickly made amends when Jason Smith powered his way through some weak defence to score in the sixth minute. Solid tackling by the Kiwi centre Jared McCracken forced St George into errors. And again McCracken takes credit on. But the Dragons kept coming back for more. Three of them driving back on Gordon Dallas. Eventually, they were rewarded with Graham Bradley crossing out wide. Bradley! Bradley scores! At right on half-time, Jason Smith opened up a hole to put replacement Robert Ralph through, and Canterbury 14-6 ahead. Ralph! He gets the try! On resumption, the Dragons played with more flair, but unable to hold the ball, Canterbury swooped to put the result beyond a doubt. Matthew Ryan, they'll score if McCracken gets into the clear! Get into the clear! At Brookvale, Ash to his fourth consecutive defeat today when they were run over by the Green Machine at Bruce Stadium. The Raiders won 40 to 10, scoring seven tries to two and leaving a big dent in the Dragons' premiership aspirations. The Dragons came to Canberra desperate to end a run of outs. When Coyne and Walker combined in the opening minutes, St George was off to the perfect start. Ankle tuck, stays on his feet. But the Dragons' defence was not up with their attack and Steve Walters worked like a surgeon first opening them up and then closing it with a 60 metre try. Walters was making more ground than the early explorers. He gave the Dragons coach heartburn every time he moved. And when Stewart danced down the touchline just before half time for another four pointer, it was almost boiling point on the St George bench. The carnage continued in the second half. A runaway Meninga. Get out the way. <laughs> and a length of the field effort from Nagus ensured the locals went home in raptures. The opposition had to settle for bandages. The Coggera collapse continues. Donnelly gives chase. How fast are you, Kenny Nagus? Jason Donnelly gives it everything he can, but it's not enough. At North Sydney Oval last night, the Bears and Manly went back to the 70s with their jumpers, but remained in the 90s with their brutality. A record crowd of 23,000 bustled for seats, 
Plenty were being put on theirs in the middle. Sickening defence, fights and moments of brilliance, the local derby had the lot. There were only two tries on the night. Tuvi darted away from a dead tied defence to put Menzies over for the first. There's the first try! Noughts were forced to the heavens for theirs. They've lost it! That's a try, is it? 11-8 was how it remained. The Sea Eagles have now beaten Penrith, Brisbane and Noughts on the trot, while the Bears are starting to make a habit of losing. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. We've just named the New South Wales State of Origin team for the first game against Queensland tomorrow week at the football stadium. With the side, Peter Overton at Rugby League Headquarters. Ken, no real surprises here tonight. The selectors sticking with players that they know can do the job at State of Origin level. For Game 1, Tim Brasher will be the fullback. Graham Mackay is on the wing. The centres, Paul McGregor and Brad Fittler. Rod Wishart is the other winger. 5'8", and captain Laurie Daly. Halfback is Ricky Stewart. The lock is Bradley Clyde. The second rowers, Paul Sirinan and Paul Harrigan. Glenn Lazarus is one prop, Ben Elias retains his position at hooker, and the other prop is Ian Roberts. The reserves, Andrew Weddingshausen, Chris Johns, Brad Mackay, and David Gillespie. So very happy players out there, a few disappointed ones as well. With me is the chairman of the selectors, Don. Round 10, the big one, Penrith and Illawarra can be seen right after the news. In a lopsided afternoon, Newcastle thumped Parramatta 34-4, Brisbane 40 defeated West 10, and Canterbury rolled East 30-16. The Bulldogs have proven they can win without Terry Lamb, but today they started like lost sheep. Namesake Adrian Lamb kicking one of Terry's trademarks for Tony Iroh. Canterbury got on the board via the boot of Darrell Halligan, then found form on the fingertips of Jason Williams. Adrian Lamb is the Roosters' replacement for the retired Brian Smith and was cock of the hoop after his first four-pointer, but from then on it was all Canterbury. Captain Dean Pay allowed Kevin Moore to collect. Halligan's touchdown gave him 18 points for the match. And Matthew Ryan staked a claim for the fastest man in league by running down speeds to Shane Werrett. But the Bulldogs remain the team to catch. At Marathon Stadium, Ivor Party pounced on a loose ball to give Parramatta the sniff of an upset. But Newcastle soon snuffed that out. The Knights sounded a charge. Andrew Johns and Paul Harrigan, the perfect sergeants at arms for their captain. Newcastle piled on five tries in the second Andrew half. Johns. Johns having That's a hand in four. What a magnificent ball to the second rower. At ANZ Stadium, Brisbane State of Origin candidates were outstanding during their 30-point thrashing of Wests. Hooker Jim Sedaris flew solo for the Magpies' two tries, but with the Interstate Series only eight days away, Alan Langer's form looks ominous. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. Cronulla's eight-point win over Balmain last night saw Andrew Eddinghausen score his 100th try for the club. If Balmain had any thoughts of an upset, dynamic halfback Paul Green buried them at Caltex Field just eight minutes in. It was a big night for Eddingshausen. First throwing the final pass for Crossan's swan dive in the corner. Then crossing for his own landmark try with a classic swerve and step around the fullback. Balmain's John Elias was put on report for his hit on Andrew Pearce. And Gillette showed he's got a nice step of his own to add some respectability to the score. South's Craig Fields celebrated his new captaincy with a strong game against Gold Coast. The visitors Dave Woods tried to end Fields' reign, but he recovered and continually taunted the opposition. Mallor crossed for three, and the Rabbitohs continue to impress with their enthusiasm. Our premiership table has Canterbury on top, followed by Canberra and Norths. Penrith and Illawarra play for their points after the news. Get points at stake, Penrith and Illawarra played a thrilling 26-all draw today. It's the third time this year the Steelers shared the points. The Panthers are a little lucky to cling to a place in the five. The game was played with an intensity that indicated its importance. The outcome influenced by referee David Manson, who missed two obvious Penrith infringements that both led to tries. Floats it for Young Singh, but it's one on one for Tonga, the Kui Tonga. In a first half that yielded seven tries, the Steelers scored the pick of them. New South Wales State of Origin three quarters, Paul McGregor and Rod Wishart combining superbly. Wishart floats it back in, McGregor goes for the corner, back to Wishart, Wishart, he gets the try. 
trailing by four at half time, Illawarra levelled through David Riolo. Here they go, Rodwell right away, Riolo, Riolo gets the try. Phil Adamson's big skillful hands created the try that appeared to seal the game for Penrith. Score. But not to be denied, Illawarra got back to within two. Rodwell gets it inside, supported by Rudd, Rudd gets it away for Cross, Cross gets over the line. Replays showed officialdom had again erred John Cross in touch before touching down. Rod Wishart's conversion salvaging a point for the Steelers. And it's a goal! They avoided defeat against Western Suburbs at Campbelltown. The game finished at 16 all. A converted try to the Bears, minutes from full time locking up the score. West began with their feathers up, coming at Norths with wave after wave of attack. After four sets of six tackles, the Bears' defence finally cracked, with Smith crossing in the corner. The replay shows it was a bad decision, but the points were on the board, and Sedaris added four more. Still disappointed at missing State of Origin selection, Sedaris showed no mercy. But a stunned Norths got back into the game after a typical Fennec charge. North's coach, Peter Louie, demanded better ball control from his charges in the second half. But it was Wetz who showed brilliant skills. After passing through 15 sets of hands, McGuinness completed the kill. West stayed in front for all but the last two minutes, when Wilson scrambled across in the corner. Taylor then levelled with a sideline screamer to finish 16 all. Close. Very close, it's there! Last night at Parramatta Stadium, the Eels ended a long losing streak, beating Cronulla. Done! He'll score the big fellow! But it wasn't all celebrations. New Kiwi recruit Eva Rapati suffered a broken leg just minutes into the second half. Stretched off in agony, Rapati was quickly followed by Keith Blackett. Blackett goes back! In the wash-up, Blackett suffered muscular damage but could be back next week. Ropati remains in hospital, his season finished before it even started. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. Continued in the Winfield Cup with the Gold Coast recording its third win of the season downing Newcastle at Seagull Stadium. Debutant fullback Alan Kempnich kicked the winning goal from the sideline with only minutes remaining. The Seagulls home 12 points to 10. The Gold Coast defeated Canberra at their last home game. They had all the early ball, but despite being without three of their regular first graders, the Knights looked set to fire. Oh, Davis. Herculean performance. The Seagulls had several chances and eventually wore down the Newcastle defence. And with the ball now, Adrian Bowles, the winners in the score. Ten minutes later, the Knights hit back a solo effort from Matthew Johns. Matthew the visitors scored again just before the break and opened a two-point buffer. Davis, he holds the ball up, gets it for Russell Wall. Gold Coast coach John Harvey sat stunned. Not even he could have asked for such an ending. With under five minutes remaining, the Coast found an opening and Wayne Bartram refused to be stopped. Here's the equaliser. At 10 all, Alan Kempnich was left with this for victory. An emotional win by the narrowest of margins. Andy Raymond produced just about the ultimate in courage to come from behind and win the first State of Origin game at the football stadium. With five minutes to go, the Queenslanders trail by eight. But two late tries and two conversions from Mal Meninga gave them victory and a 1-0 lead in the best of three series. A rousing reception at Brisbane Airport today for Queensland's heroes but last night's pre-game hype threatened to blow the Maroons back over the border. From the kickoff, New South Wales sent out their own welcoming party. Martin Bella not knowing which way to turn, Paul Harrigan finding a way under Queensland's defences. Blues tribe, I think. Yes. The local tribe called for more scalps, but Queensland snapped out of their siege mentality. Julian O'Neill touching down in the corner. A fumble from Harrigan went unnoticed before the referee ruled Brasher offside on half-time, even though a high shot showed otherwise. I think he was on onside. In the second session, Paul Sirenen handed out his own rough justice. Oh, big tackle by Sirenen! Brad Mackay made 36 tackles, but Brad Fittler's kick for Daly rewarded the Trojan-like lock with the only statistics that matters. He'll score! 
New South Wales are trying. Down 12-4, Queensland's brave passing paid off for Khan. Meninga's kick made it 12-10. Then in the last minute, the visitors' final fling. This is the last throw of the dice for the Maroons. Queensland are coming back. Darren Smith for Lager. Lager gets it away. Here's the big fella. Gets the pass on. Coin. Coin goes for the corner and gets the try. Queensland. It's a miracle. Oh, yeah. Meninga landed the goal for a four-point win. The home coach and players personified defeat, but the winners were grinners. It's like being on a horse that's 50 to 1 and, and having your life savings on it and finding out that it's got up one by a nose. The game goes for 80 minutes and that's what we did tonight. The last-minute loss took its toll on bodies. Wishart, Brasher, Roberts and McGregor were all injured, but the Blues vow they'll recover and save the series. We just have to do that. There's, there's no how we're going to do it. It just has to be done. They had some luck there tonight, Queensland, but uh, you've got to be in the right position to take your own luck. And it's just as easy can turn next game. Game two on June 8 at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. His hopes of making the semi-finals look shot after they crashed to their fifth consecutive defeat today. Playing at home, Saints were expected to finally get it together against Souths. And even though both sides scored three tries, the Rabbitohs were always in control. After four successive losses, Saints searched for a drought breaker against Souths, but early points flowed the Rabbitohs' way. Darrell Trindle kicking two penalty goals before Jeff Hardy even things up. Hardy will first the away for the try. Noel Goldthorpe missed a gift goal in front, and from there, Souths made life hell for Saints. Jason Sinclair regathered his own kick to put Souths ahead 8 4. Then Trindle's deft step tripped the Dragons' defence. Gordon Tallis sounded a second half charge, but Trindle bedeviled Saints' attack before Sinclair combined with David Penner to put Souths over the line. Desperation got Jason Donnelly a late try, but after five straight losses, Saints are praying for a minor miracle to make the semi-finals. In Wollongong, a battle-weary Brisbane cops some cold steel from Illawarra. Good shot there from Peter Johnson. With ten Broncos backing up from state of origin, a fresh John Simon snared first points. Frustration earned Kerrod Walters a ten-minute break, but no rest for Simon. This effort caught the eyes of Blues selectors and made the Broncos see red. He stands Julian O'Neill up. Only hard hits from Mark Hone and the sheer speed of Michael Hancock kept the half-time deficit to ten. The Premiers dropped their bundle and the ball in the second session. Jonathan Britton crossing untouched. John Cross barging over before Illawarra buried Brisbane with a dash of Bronco football. Turns it away and it goes to Navarra and Britton, Jonathan Britton. Some spite marred the final minutes but failed to wreck one of Illawarra's best victories in 13 years of Winfield Cup football. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. In Penrith from the home of rugby right after the night. six they want to. How many families here, how many couples or would the husband... 11, the Raiders running in seven tries to one. Laurie Daly. Then, just five minutes later, Deeth himself was knocking at the door. But this was Daly's moment. He toyed with the Roosters throughout the first half and by the break, Canberra had plundered 22 points to four. Another Raiders star was fullback Brett Mullins. His upfield runs are highlight in a display that again pushes him into state of origin calculation. In the end, Canberra scored seven tries to one. The Roosters hopelessly outclassed by a team oozing with it. The Tigers running on was the only time Balmain fans got to cheer at Leichhardt Oval last night. Manly was in a mean mood. And with the maestro Cliff Lyons in control, the Sea Eagles took flight. Manly did the simple things without a hitch. And aided by one of the worst defensive efforts of the season, the points just kept coming. Even supporters were running for cover as Manly roared on in the second half. Lyons finished the way he started. It was a stunning performance with the only bright spot for Balmain Skipper Benny Elias cleared of a broken arm. The Norths and Souths in the five. Into Waratah Stadium to watch the Bulldogs smash Penrith 30 to 10. A second successive minor premiership now well in their grasp. Canterbury's Concord experiment proved a resounding success. The corporate facility is a major drawcard for sponsors, although some opted for the much cheaper seats. 
and it was this they'd come to see from the Bulldogs in the first of three games at Waratah Stadium this year. Jason Williams offloads, Matthew Ryan will score! The christening was complete, Kevin Moore scoring his team's second try after just 20 minutes. Kevin Moore gets the four-pointer. Penrith coach Phil Gould already had one loss on his mind this week and he was staring at another. Canterbury unstoppable with a 22-point first half. He gets a try! Gould brought injured skipper John Cartwright back to first grade just before the break. His return fired up the Panthers. Halfback Gary Freeman giving Dean Payne an impromptu massage in the heat of battle. And after 51 minutes, the Kiwi finally helped his side find the line. Freeman turns it out and is that Alexander? No, it's Beckett. As the match petered out with both sides crossing again, Jason Smith may have put his state of origin hopes on hold, leaving the ground with an ankle injury. Brent Rees, Seven Nightly News. Licking their wounds following Wigan's defeat of the Broncos last night. Kevin Walters and Steve Runoff now in doubt for Queensland's state of origin team. For New South Wales, things are looking brighter. After fitness tests today, the chosen team might even take the field on Wednesday night at the MCG. It seems origin without injury is just not football. This morning, Brad Clyde ran for the first time in two weeks. Well, I ran fairly freely out there today, so I give myself a 100% chance. Ian Roberts remembers game one for a hamstring injury. A week has passed since corrective surgery and the indications from today's medical were positive. So I don't want to let the side down. Last time I did it in the first five minutes of the game, I didn't know whether to stay on, come off, run around and make a fool of myself. So I wouldn't do that to the team this time. If it wasn't right, I won't be playing. Joining the Blues today, Glenn Lazarus and Chris Johns. Both escaped injury and the smoky fireworks in last night's club challenge. It was a game that Wigan dominated. A good tactic in these conditions, a chance, a try! Barry John Mather exposed a soft Brisbane defence in front of 54,000. Aaron scores himself! Bad handling cost the Broncos. Sailor's blindside dart, a rare moment in what was otherwise another awful night out. Wigan up 20 to 14 and once again world club champion. And injuries from last night have hit Queensland. Flow for New South Wales, Ian Roberts has ruled himself out of state of origin too next Wednesday night. He's yet to undergo a formal medical, but at Manly this afternoon, the big prop said he was no chance of playing next Wednesday because of a hamstring injury. Obviously, the selectors you know, have chosen me to, you know, to do a job, and I just don't think I'm, you know, I'm capable of, of doing it. Um, and unless I'm 100% and at, at the moment I don't think my hamstring is 100%. Queensland has also lost a key player, centre Steve Runoff out, also because of a hamstring problem. It's come along well but it's just not good enough. Mark Coyne moves into the centres with Gold Coast Adrian Valls, the surprise replacement on the bench. Manly has defeated Parramatta but only after surviving a second half scare at Brookvale. The Sea Eagles won 32-18, producing their best football when they trailed the visitors. Manly opened the local show with a familiar brand of football, smart passes, quick feet and an early lead. Goes Chased by Galbraith and there's a try for Manly. Cliff Lyons fingertipped a spilt Parramatta ball for Danny Moore. Lyons should have gone for it himself but it's a try anyway. Then Mark Carroll steamed in to make it 16-0. Before luck and a sense of adventure opened the gate for the Eels. Two tries to Garen Casey and one to Danny Krankovic put Parramatta in front, 18-16. But the fairy tale was snuffed out with two more manly tries. The only sobering note for the Sea Eagles, Captain Jeff Toovey troubled by a knee injury. South put out the welcome mat for East at the stadium last night. The Rabbitohs hardly a side eyeing six straight wins. That was until Jason Sinclair accepted the Roosters invitation. His journey to the line, also an audition for the next Tina Turner commercial. Tongue wagging, he followed the camera all the way to touchdown. Six all, the Roosters made it 12-6. Then had two tries disallowed for double movements. Via Talii took a leaf out of Sinclair's book, his try full of speed and animation. Twelve old Daryl Trindle put the finishing touches on a victory that never looked certain. Peter Overton, National Nine News. Semi-final hopes by thrashing a hapless Gold Coast this afternoon at Caltex Field. The Sharks recorded their biggest win in club history, just missing the half century, with new Kiwi international Dave Watson in outstanding form. 
The Cronulla management went to extraordinary lengths to welcome new Kiwi recruit Dave Watson and his gratitude was overwhelming as he set up try after try in a record spree at Caltex Field. Green gets the pass away. His passing was outstanding. Paul Bell can thank him for three tries. Oh, Bell gets the try. The Gold Coast defence had no answers to Watson. Not even three tacklers was enough. The defence off, looks to unload, does miraculously, and Neve goes over to score for Dave Watson. Tremendous stuff. The new fullback was simply unstoppable. Cronulla scoring their highest score ever. Then back, and the bell goes in to get another try. Watson received a standing ovation when he left the field late in the game with an ankle injury. Dale Shearer showing the frustrations of a side beaten almost single-handedly by a Kiwi Dynamo. Crowd guaranteed every player would be out to impress. 6-0 with Tim Brash's conversion. Debutant Brett Mullins then sent shivers through the Maroons' defence. E.T. was a fingernail short of putting the Blues further in front, while Kerrod Walters nearly twisted Brad Clyde's ankle out of the MCG. McGregor's flick to Eddingshausen put the Blues winger on yet another four-point course. Queensland repelled it, as well as Harrigan, right on the chalk. For New South Wales, it was a hard-earned 8-0 half-time lead. The Maroons could only tantalise in the second 40 minutes. Desperate stuff! O'Neill! Origin 2 was sealed for the Blues when Ricky Stewart rolled out his very best. Ricky Stewart, magic! I think it was shown out there that there's a lot of spirit, a lot of pride, and players just love playing in this blue jumper. We're just determined that they weren't going to cross our line. The next two weeks will be easy to live with in the last two weeks. One to go, we'll make sure we'll win that. That was a very sweet win for us, and, you know, it's a bit of history, that game. Body's willing, the decider is Monday week at Lang Park. Peter Overton, National 9 News. Their best football since winning the Premiership in 1991 to beat Canberra today. Last night, Brisbane conjured a comeback worthy of Lazarus to beat Canterbury, but looked to have lost their big prop for at least two months. Today, Penrith was scintillating. Penrith ran onto home soil, a side determined to keep pace with the five and facing a jaded Canberra outfit with four players backing up from Origin 2 and minus Bradley Clyde and Brett Mullins. The Panthers made the perfect start with Danny Farrah crossing after just five minutes. After Brad Fittler was sin-bin, the Raiders took full advantage. Some quick thinking from Jason Croker, sending Noah Nadruka in. Panthers 5'8", Steve Carter was lucky to stay on the field after this tackle on Laurie Daly. Brad Fittler's spell off the field only proved to fire him up. Seconds after his return, some brilliant footwork saw Gary Freeman over. Oh, great work by Brad Fittler! Fiddler put the match beyond doubt after strolling through some lacklustre Canberra defence. The Raiders lucky to keep the scoreline to 30 to 16. And look at the faces, they know they've played well today. Last night in Brisbane, the Broncos suffered a major blow when origin forward Glenn Lazarus was carried from the field midway through the second half. An injury which is expected to keep him out for eight weeks. To rub further salt into the wound, minutes later Jason Smith went in to take the Bulldogs to a seemingly winnable lead of 10-2. But with only 10 minutes to go, the Broncos scored two tries. The second in the last minute of the game after a doubtful pass put Peter Ryan over to score. Brisbane snatching the game by two points. Origin forward Gordon Tallis will face the judiciary on a headbutting charge after being sent off in St George's loss to Newcastle this afternoon. It was the Dragons' sixth consecutive defeat. In the other match, West scraped home against Balmain. Thousands were turned away at Marathon Stadium, a sellout of more than 30,000. With the semi-final hopes of both sides on the line, St George posted the first try. But the Dragons were soon left a man short when Gordon Tallis was sent off for headbutting. Minutes later, the Johns brothers combined to put Newcastle in front. Matthew Johns, the grubber kick. They're going to score! It was the spark the Knights needed, and with Origin hero Paul Harrigan leading the way, the Dragons could do little. 
Even referee McCallum was in danger as the Knights steamrolled their way to victory. St George did manage two second half tries, but with a man short, they were no match for the Knights. The numbers, can they get it over yet? 24 to 14. With St George and Newcastle playing their do or die effort after the news. It was a thriller at Campbelltown Sports Ground. West's holding off a spirited Balmain fight back to win 32 to 28. With the outcome academic, little attention centred on Campbelltown Sports Ground, but Ken McGuinness put everyone on notice with a kick and regather. Tim Brasher hit back for Balmain with a brilliant solo run, but from there it was all Wests. Paul Smith dived into a corner, Andrew Leeds crossed for two tries in five minutes, and when McGuinness got his second, the Magpies were flying high. West led 32-6 before being hit by a Balmain revival. The Tigers scored four second half tries, Lions winning the race for the ball, and Brasher shaking off all signs of origin fatigue. The Tigers' comeback fell four short of its target and may have come at a high cost. Origin forward Paul Surinan suffering severe concussion in this altercation with Stephen Carney. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. To the Blues lineup for the third and deciding match at Lang Park. As expected, that's the only change to the New South Wales team with Roberts replacing the injured prop Glenn Lazarus for next Monday's game. Squad assembles, of course, later tonight for its medicals. And as we told you earlier in the bulletin, the Maroons, though, have been forced to make four changes in a bid to win the series. Out of the starting side, Trevor Gilmeister, Kerrod Walters, Mark Coyne and Andrew G. Back, of course, Steve Renniff and Steve Walters, with Coyne and G dropping back to the reserves bench. And now, top Canterbury forward Jason Smith has finally made the Queensland State of Origin team. And the North Sydney Bears broke a four-match losing streak, defeating Illawarra 12-4 at North Sydney Oval. Halfback Jason Taylor scored all the points for the Bears with a try and four goals. The win lifts them to equal second on the ladder. After a three-week hibernation, North this Sydney started the better. Jason Taylor nearly scoring early in the match. But the Bears had to settle for two penalty goals from the boot of Jason Taylor for their first half tally of four points. Illawarra also scored four. The try started by a great pass from John Simon. Fullback Brendan O'Mara finished it to keep the match even at half-time. After the restart, it was a confident North Sydney nearly scored from a set play. The Bears were again unlucky not to hit the front. A field goal from Jason Taylor just offline. North went to the lead. That man Jason Taylor from 40 metres. At the 58th minute mark, Craig Wilson motored into open spaces and then found the ever-present Jason Taylor in support. Taylor gets it over the line! It wasn't over for Peter Louie and his coaching staff. John Simon kept probing for any chance that the North defence held. The win, the Bears' first in four matches, moves them into equal second with Manly and revitalises their semi-final hopes. Russell Fairfax, 10 News. ...have signalled they're still in the race for Rugby League's final five with a win over Eastern Suburbs. Last night, South Sydney defeated Penrith for their seventh win in a row, while today the Knights did enough to keep the Roosters at bay. The Knights, riding with a few extra horsepower today, appeared to have the Roosters measure. Puts it up high, close to the post. Silver in trouble, anybody's ball. Try time for Newcastle. When Jamie Ainscoe broke Jason Hudson's tackle to put Wayne Richards away, Newcastle led 14-0 at half-time. Sprints away for the try, set up by Jamie Ainscoe. With East captain Craig Salvatore troubled with the flu and playing only a part-time role in the game, Jason Lowry took on the creative role and found support in Rod Silver. Silver, and Silver wins the battle. Matthew Johns and the fickleness of the football combined for Newcastle to again command a 12-point break. The speedy Silver's second try lifted the game out of its mediocrity and East to within a converted try. Silver kicks clear and Rod Silver scores a much-needed try for East. A committed Newcastle defence holding off the Roosters' late charge to keep their finals hopes alive. Last night, Souths made it seven in a row. Again, it was a roller coaster route to victory. After leading 12 2, then trailing 18 12, Jason Bell and Duncan McRae scored the tries that keep the Rabbits in the five. He goes to the centre, Duncan McRae! Duncan McRae! Big today with Parramatta and West playing the match of the day after the news. At Seagull Stadium, Manly held out a determined Gold Coast 18 14. Both sides scored three tries, Matthew Ridge's boot the difference.
The Sea Eagles got a great start. After just eight minutes, Cliff Lyons engineered an easy try for Jeff Toovey, and it appeared the Seagulls should have stayed in the park. But the locals hit back. In front of a crowd of more than 10,000, the coast crossed for two tries, hooker Eddie Fallon's the first. Then Craig Coleman threw a cutout pass for John Scarden to score in the corner. Just before the break, Manley snatched back the lead when Lyons delivered his trademark pass to Owen Cunningham. In the second half, Manley extended the score to 18-10 when Lyons and Menzies combined. The Gold Coast rallied late when Scarden got his second. In the end, Manley happy to escape with the points. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. The match started disastrously for Parramatta. Within eight minutes, West had strolled through for two tries to lead 10-0. But almost as quickly, Parramatta took control. The Eels claiming the lead through Odin Ryan after a great ball from Clark. When Chris King ploughed his way over four minutes from half-time, Parramatta led 18-10. In a match marred by errors and defensive lapses, the Eels withstood a late charge from West to move off the bottom of the ladder with a 30-24 victory. Captain of the Australian Test side to play France next month, but he's probably under more pressure than any of his teammates after a very ordinary effort for Queensland. Canberra's Brett Mullins is the new fullback, while Alan Langer and Steve Walters retain the hotly contested halfback and hooker positions. Brad Fittler has been switched to the forwards, and Queensland's Mark Hone makes his debut on the bench. And New South Wales forward Ian Roberts will front the Australian Rugby League judiciary after being cited for a tackle in last night's State of Origin decider at Lang Park. The victorious Blues arrived home this afternoon, a little worse for wear, not so much from the game, but the celebrations. There was barely an hour's sleep between the entire team as they arrived in Sydney to continue the celebrations. Last night, in front of a fired-up Lang Park crowd, New South Wales ruthlessly went about ruining the origin send-off to Mal Meninga. After just 30 minutes, the Blues led 18-0 before Kevin Walters set up Andrew G to put Queensland on the board. He puts a kick in, regathers. Here's a try. Here's a try. But it proved barely a hiccup to the Blues party. Queensland did get to within seven, but New South Wales, led brilliantly by Laurie Daly, sealed victory with six minutes remaining. And state of origin. And a great captain's knock from him because, um, I mean, he's been crook all week. He hasn't trained and um, it takes a champion player to go out and do what he did tonight. As the Blues celebrated, Queensland debutant Jason Smith was in hospital nursing a fractured cheekbone, the result of this sickening head clash with Ian Roberts, which infuriated Jason's brother and teammate Darren. No, it was a coward of the act to, uh, to hit him, you know, uh, without the ball and behind play, you know, uh, that's, that kind of stuff went out about 10 years ago. Roberts has been cited to appear before the ARL judiciary, but no action has been taken against Bradley Clyde for this tackle on Queensland winger Willie Kahn. Warren Sim, Seven Nightly News. ...for which Melbourne is infamous, the Steelers got home 22 to 6. The Melbourne experiment worked for State of Origin, but not Illawarra Balmain. A meagre crowd of 6,000 turned out in the cold and rain to watch the Steelers stroll through some feeble Balmain defence. McGregor sights a little opening, chased by Elias, and McGregor's only a few metres out and crashes through the fullback and over. Their second try was just as easy, and the Tigers look set for another hiding. Off Moore. Finds his winger in oh, it's oh. an easy try. But shortly before half time, Balmain hit back to trail by just six. Elias to McVeigh and he crashes through. As conditions deteriorated, Illawarra put on two more tries to seal the points. 22 to 6. Play on and this is going to be allowed as a try. Brisbane at Bruce Stadium, putting a big dent in the Broncos' semi-final hopes. With 15 players backing up from Monday night, a crowd of 24,000 yearned for a mini state of origin. But rain made everything slippery, and Noah Nandruku elusive. Canberra boasts an unbeaten record at Bruce this season. Steve Walters did his bit to keep it intact, 
But with Walter's brothers on both sides, sibling rivalry erupted before Kevin set up Paul Morris. Morris, Morris cutting back inside. Morris going for the line end. He's got to get it down and score. Andrew G and John Lomax failed to keep their cool, but the Raiders ran hot in the second half. Jason Deeth rewarded for supporting Laurie Daly. Daly's field goal gave Canberra a 13-point buffer before Brad Clyde's inside pass found Reuben Wickey. Clyde sends it back inside, going for the corner they're in. And as the Raiders put their origin stars on ice, David Ferner bards through flimsy defence. Breaking out of the tackle there is David Ferner. Ferner still going to get in. The Broncos' consolation came on the siren, but Brad Thorne's first try in first grade may have been Brisbane's last throw of the dice. Our table has Canterbury and North playing... ...threatening and so were the Bears. Locked at nil all for almost 30 minutes. It took Matt Sears to break the drought. This is for Matt Sears! Oh, that's a beautiful pass! But even better was the pass from Jim Dimmick, which gave the Bulldogs an 8-7 lead. Dimmick! Oh, what a pass! This was a crucial match for the Bears, and their response was swift. More than a chance! Hooker Mark Soden had been scheming all day and fittingly he helped seal the win. North's getting home 19-8. That's a miracle try! 12 months today, Souths were reeling from a 54-8 Friday night thrashing at ANZ. The signs were ominous after four minutes. O'Neill will score! It was the start coach Wayne Bennett had desperately wanted. We've been battling for five or six weeks to get a first try in the board and uh, get some confidence in the team. And we, you know, with the, with the uh, changes late in the week with the injuries to certain players and that, we just did need to score well. We did need to get away well. Um, and when we did that, I, I was pretty confident after that. Brisbane's experienced batted bench watched on. The team left to keep up the fight. There's a punch up in back play. Jason Bell and Steve Renoff. After 13 minutes, South is expected unleashed to raid. Quick hands, giving a reserve tally high, four points. Work, Kenna, a try, tally high. The celebrations, though conservative, were short-lived. Langer on target for a hungry sailor. Wendell Sailor gets a try. O'Neill landed one from the sideline, the Broncos by six. And he gets it. Seven minutes later, Brisbane barged over again. South's paying for plenty of errors and some very poor tackling. Mark Hone left the field, his ankle sprained. He fears missing out on Wednesday's test match. It feels like a sprain, basically. You know, there's a lot of burning sensation, and um, I couldn't put any weight on it when I was on the field. I came off and tried to um, put some more strapping on because I wanted to go back on after half time, but it just, you know, just wasn't good enough. Teammate Peter Ryan will face the judiciary Monday night, reported for allegedly biting Jason Bell. Well, we couldn't see a bite there. The match played at a frantic pace, offered some high shots. It was high and deserved the penalty. Langer and Brisbane driving the advantage hard. He shouldn't really be doing. That's the forwards job. They've driven him back. It was 18-4 at half time. 19-year-old Driscoll making a sparkling starting debut. Driscoll! Driscoll! He gets a try! It took only seven minutes for Brisbane to get the scoreboard ticking again in the second half. But he's put up a kick. And it came down for Madison to unload. Turn back inside for Sailor. 22-4, numbers giving South consolation. Field, then Trindle, then Doniger. Doniger is over. The bits and pieces Brisbane were on top though. Sailor accepting another Langer gift. With that cross kick, finds Wendell Sailor. And Sailor gets his trifecta. 28-10, Renoff also planting the foot down. Finds Welders, who finds Renoff. Who finds the try line? It was the Brisbane of old. South bubble burst. Eight in a row, now well out of range. Driscoll for Galia. Galia for McKenna. There's another try. Renoff solo dash wrapped it up. Brisbane winners 40 to 10 in one of its most outstanding wins of the season. Renoff, look at him go. He'll score. Renoff goes over the 20 metre line. They chase him vain, but Renoff... Renault gets his third try of the game. We need to put together. And added to Canberra's shocking away record with a runaway win at Bear Park. North sharpened their claims for the minor premiership with a 25-10 victory, while last night Brisbane ended South's seven-game winning streak with a 40-10 thrashing. Canberra got off Daly. to a disastrous start against North when Daly was concussed in the early minutes. With the Raiders in disarray, a kick by Taylor gave Hoppy the opportunity to break the Canberra defence. 
Hoppy's in the corner. Hoppy's in. Five minutes later, Sears produced a try-saving tackle on Mullins, but could do nothing to stop Meninga from scoring. But then more bad news for Canberra when Clyde joined the casualty list and Taylor extended the Bears' lead to seven. Straight through the middle. After the break, Norths continued their onslaught with Cleary at the end of another great kick by Taylor. Madruka gave the Raiders some hope with a try nine minutes from full time. And Madruka will race away for a try chased by Sears, who was hauling him in. But that was snuffed out by Soden. Norths victors 25-10. 24 defeated Balmain 8, Illawarra 32 over Parramatta 10, and in an incredible scoreline, Manly thrashed St George 61-0. With St George ending their losing streak last week, 22,000 packed Brookvale expecting a close match, but Cliff Lyons pop-up pass for Ian Roberts provided a preview of things to come. Lyons orchestrated Saints massacre, featuring in almost every Manly try, finishing this one himself. Manly led 25-0 at half-time, but the Sea Eagles allowed Saints no relief in the second half. Lyons combining with Jeff Tuvey for Steve Menzies' second try. Lyons and Tuvey turned on another tandem act for Matt Ridge. The goal kicker's touchdown giving him a personal tally of 25 points. A 10-try feast started and finished with Lyons. An inside pass for Daniel Gartner giving Manly 61 points. St George's biggest loss since 1944. At Belmore, bottom placed Balmain kept front runners Canterbury at bay before Matt Ryan's easy intercept brought tears to the eyes of the toughest of Tiger fans. Graham Lyons stayed with the sideline to cross in the corner, but Darrell Halligan's boot kicked Canterbury clear. Darren Smith's try putting the dogs back on top of the table. Andrew McKinley, National 9 News. A dominant display from Illawarra against Parramatta. The Steelers' 22-point win keeps them in the hunt for a semi-final spot. It was a nice Sunday afternoon out for the Steelers and their fans. Whether it was Craig Simon off a Paul McGregor pass or Brett Rodwell finishing off his teammates' good work, Illawarra always looked like winners. Rodwell scored three of the Steelers' seven tries, the victory keeping them in the semi-final hunt. Mark Murray's coaching future at East is reportedly shaky. Now it might have the death wobble after Andrew Weddingshausen's spectacular overhead pass set Cronulla on the road to victory last night. E.T. scored two tries of his own, both full of pace and class. His one-man mission directing Cronulla to a four tries to two, 20 points to eight victory. At Campbelltown, Gold Coast winger John Scarden was reported for an alleged spear tackle on West Aaron Willis. But the winger showed no ill effects, scoring three tries in the Magpies' thumping 38-4 win. Our ladder has Manly and North snapping at the heels of the Bulldogs, while Canberra and South are just holding their... One point of the five with a solid victory over Penrith today. Some space and away goes his brother, Matthew John scores. The Panthers trailed 18-4 until a mini comeback sparked by Phil Adamson. Talker, what a beautiful pass! But Penrith let themselves down with poor defence. Nathan Barnes' second try, securing victory for the Knights. Gets away from a tackle and scores his second try. Canton Rugby League team today coming on top of last night's 58-0 thrashing of France in the test at Parramatta Stadium. After surgery, 5'8", Laurie Daly has revealed his knee injury is not as bad as he thought. He'll be out of action for up to a month, but should be fit for the end-of-season kangaroo tour. Daly underwent surgery this morning on perhaps rugby league's most famous knee. Last night, after starring in Australia's huge test win over France, it seemed both knees were ready to give up. I feel uh, you know, pretty cool. Today, a groggy Daly revealed brighter news. Feeling all right? Yeah, good yeah, thanks. Some bright news though for you. Yeah, not too bad. While Daly can now plan for a second kangaroo tour, his knee must be treated as a treasured possession. We might have placed training to the swimming pool and uh, bike riding just to uh, keep that pounding out of the knee joint. Last night, Daly was at his best. On his way to man of the match, he set up captain Mal Meninga. Then scored two of his own. The French unable to match the cunning and class of the Test 5-8. It was a 12-try blitz. Steve Renoff crossed three times, his last a sprint victory over Tim Brasher. 
It was the perfect goodbye for Mal Meninga. The guys had the right attitude tonight, went out there and played pretty good football. And, we, and um, I was very pleased to have you know, the last game on, on Australian soil to win. 13,000 rugby league converts paid homage in the city of churches. Jason Stevens in the top right hand of screen, making sure they kept the faith. West scrappled for early forward superiority. Glenn Grief trying to give some to the Saints here. Chapman driven into the ground. St George used the air to break an early nil all scoreline, but their ploy didn't get results. It was evergreen lock Paul Langmack who did most of the damage early, a bus setting up West's first points. After an agonising 120 minutes without scoring, Damien Chapman gave St George's wounded confidence a boost. And this one is straight over the black dot. It was just the tonic after the spell Jason Stevens pushed off some mediocre tackling in the lead up to the first of the tri avalanche. Maybon, little Rod Maybon, floats the pass out wide. This is Mundine. Yes, it's a try. All of a sudden, the floodgates opened. Stevens rewarded for his forward leadership. Then Stevens ahead, and he's over to put it down. St George, over the 61 0 drubbing last week, were on a roll, but that man Langmack offloaded well again. Langmack for leads, and leads gets the try. 12 10 West behind, Stephen Carney trying to get them in front, Graham Bradley doing well to hold them out. Did he get a down? No. Stand in Captain Bradley's efforts were rewarded. Half Chapman on the end of some lazy defence. Chapman comes in and gets it over the line. The Dragons forward pack were on fire. Talis's punishing run opening West up again. Inside the 20 gets the pass away. And Rex Turf. Turf goes in to score. In the 73rd minute, Talis self-inspired was over. So George's forwards queuing up for work. Talis goes in. St. George another try. Wes had paid for miserable defence. Jim Sudaris tried to ease the pain. And referee Clark gives the try. The Saints, the self-canonised Adelaide Rugby League ambassadors, had won. Scott Goulet showing why the fours were in seventh heaven. Throwing the pass out for Ian Heron to get his try. It was tough work, but uh, Brian Smith lifted us really well. And uh, we had a lot of advice from a good mate, Brad Cooper. I'd like to thank him. And we got back on the rails tonight. In the dressing room, St George reflections. Yeah, probably reflected in the way. Top three with a convincing win over South Sydney at the Sydney Football Stadium yesterday. The Bears scored six tries to two, running out victors 32 points to 10. Against his old club, Mario Fennick had plenty of supporters, but not everyone was glad to see him. Fennick throwing punches now. And in they come. Bell knocks. The Rabbitohs opened the point scoring some individual brilliance by winger Paul Meller. The Bears had the majority of possession and converted that into points. They snapped the tries. They led 22-6 at the break and continued to dominate in the second. Hooker Mark Soden bagging two four-pointers. Souths made far too many uncharacteristic mistakes and Norths capitalised, scoring six tries to two to take the match 32 points to 10. is proudly brought to you by MMI Insurance. Then in Nine's league match of the day right after the news. In other round 15 results, Canterbury defeated Parramatta 30-14. to The same scoreline in Illawarra's victory over the Gold Coast. And Manly stopped East 34-0. The Sea Eagles started with East, so way they finished against St George. Craig Hancock sending Steve Menzies away for his first. Terry Hill issued this welcome back to Manly, knocking Tony Iroh senseless, but Menzies has a sixth sense when it comes to finding try lines at Brookvale. The second row pulled off a clever kick on the final tackle before beating Rod Silver in the race for the ball to score his hat-trick. Matt Dumford copped a ten-minute spell in the sin bin, but Manly's spirited defence kept Easts out of it. Anthony Rogers crossed in the corner for Manly's final try. Matthew Ridge landing the goal from the sideline on the siren. The Sea Eagles notching up 95 points in just two outings at Brookvale. At Parramatta Stadium, Darren Smith set up Steve Hughes to give Canterbury a 10-0 lead. But when Jason Smith was sin-binned, the bite went out of the Bulldogs. Parramatta hit back with two tries and were poised to even the score before Lee Oden Ryan missed from in front. 
Ben Gillies barged over and when Jim Dimmick's juggling act secured Hughes' second, Canterbury seemed home, but Garen Casey was rewarded for chasing his charge down. Oden Ryan and Darren Britt settled some personal scores before Craig Polamauta put paid to another Parramatta comeback. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. Illawarra continued its excellent form, defeating the Gold Coast by 16 points at Seagull Stadium. In a tight first half, Illawarra got the early points when centre Brett Rodwell stormed over after 20 minutes. Bussian replied for the Seagulls, but Rodwell was proving the difference. For the second week in a row, he scored a hat-trick of tries as the Steelers ran riot in the second half. In the end, a 30-14 victory that keeps Illawarra in touch with the Premiership pace setters. At Leichhardt Oval last night, the Canberra Green machine simply rolled over Balmain. The Tigers offered token resistance in what was a long, cold night for their supporters. Jason Croker starred for the Raiders, setting up three tries and scoring two himself in a dominating display. 36-0 to Canberra, Balmain can't wait for the season to finish. At Caltex Field last night, high drama as the Cronulla Sharks tore Penrith apart. It was a committed effort from the home side, completely overwhelmed by an incident involving referee Bill Harrigan and Penrith coach Phil Gould. Harrigan ordered Gould from the sideline for disrupting play. Gould at first didn't budge. He eventually remembered the rule. Earlier, Penrith had been on the end of a heavy penalty count and Cronulla didn't waste the advantage. It was a 32 to nil drubbing with the well-documented harrigan Ghoul feud now at boiling point. On our Premier League, the Broncos, it's taken 11 meetings between the clubs, but today a patched up Brisbane, no match at Marathon Stadium. Newcastle's roll towards the top five faced a tough assignment at Marathon Stadium, a desperate Brisbane. The Knights' record of 10 straight losses to the Broncos also weighed heavily against them. It all added up to some early nerves for the home side and Michael Hancock made them pay as he danced through some weak tackles. It's with Michael Hancock! He's in! He's in! The early setback stung the Knights into action as they started to produce the type of razzle-dazzle that's normally associated with Brisbane. Eventually, the Broncos cracked. Here's Matthew! He's made it inside the run! Harrigan! Harrigan gets the prize! Brisbane were their own worst enemy in the first half, continually turning the ball over through some fundamental errors. Newcastle didn't let them off the hook. Melt with Andrew John! Nathan Burns! Burns for the corner! In the second half, the Broncos became frustrated with their increasing mistake rate. Alan Langer finding out that there's no future abusing referees as he was marched for a stint in the sin bin. Down to 12 men, the Broncos were ready to be finished off. Matthew John! Dummies twice, O'Davis, O'Davis, Wire, Wire gets a try. Then another try for good measure as Newcastle fans cheered their heroes on to demolish the Broncos. Brisbane did manage a late try to make the final scoreline at least respectable at 24 to 10. On the go out there against Canterbury, reason not to get cocky. The top of the table meeting promised a cocktail of brutal defence and heated emotions. It took only seconds. So the arm swung there, and that's where the number 41 from Gilly said, that's not happening. Within another minute, Ian Roberts trounced on Darren Britt. Oh, Britt! Britt taken in a beauty, and now it's on again! Roberts, though, was predator and victim. Here's one of the targets, Roberts! Craig Polamounta felt the full weight of David Gillespie's elbow. He's got a bad one up around the throat area. There's some concern about Craig Polamounta. It was old-fashioned football, big shots calling for a solid retaliation. In some cases, payback time for other matches. Like a game of dodge and cut. The intensity in Canterbury's attack proved as strong as their defence. Dimmick forcing a manly error, Halligan showing why he was man of the match. Halligan beat him to it. Halligan gets the punch in. Puts it down. Sensational try. Halligan drove Canterbury to a 6-0 lead with his conversion. The Sea Eagles had a terrible time handling the ball. Seven crucial errors giving the home side the opportunity. Looked around them and put them down. Oh, the Kiwis are having a field day here. The field day, though, was only just beginning. This effort leaving the Sea Eagles at sixes and sevens. Hughes! Oh, Stephen Hughes gets it away. Beautiful pass. Dimmick! Dimmick gets a 
touchdown! It's a try! Manly now on the end of an embarrassing thrashing. Kangaroo prospect Stephen Menzies never giving up. Menzies for 13 tries! Canterbury making up for disappointing last wins were running hot. 22-4 at half time. And Williams gets his second! Manly were told to safeguard possession. They didn't heed the advice. Punishing tackles, releasing the football. Taken in the tackle, just flicked it out the back anywhere. It was never going to be taken by Craig Hancock. Canterbury were unlucky not to increase their margin. Referee Greg McCallum ruling against the extra. And he's going into three Manly players. Is he going for the football? I thought he was. Matthew Ryan threw himself into everything. The Lions' his kick is good. Oh. Matthew Ryan, superb. Another Halligan penalty made it 24-4. Manly responded by spilling another chance. Really haven't got even lukewarm tonight. Lions' total frustration landed him 10 minutes in the sin bin. Halligan shot his fifth from six attempts. But in a tired second half, the Bulldogs had control, even if they couldn't score. Gets over the line. Does he get it down? McCallum says no. Manly did break through for another, but by this time, Canterbury were comfortable winners, 26-10. And a comprehensive victory. One of the best of the year for Canterbury. Traffic for Canberra over Cronulla today. The Raiders scoring their 19th straight win at home. Canberra defeated the Sharks 56 to 12, scoring 10 tries to two. Brett Mullins topped the count with three of his own. The Sharks are known as the camera shy team. Give them a TV appearance and they buckle. Today, Canberra simply made it double trouble. An injured Laurie Daly soon warmed up as the green machine hit top speed. Ruben Wickey, the final link in a back line bursting with numbers. Noah Nadruku showed a delightful step. Brett Mullins ripping defence. But nothing matched the offload from Ricky Stewart to Wiki. The scoreboard rolling over to 16-0. And it just kept on going. Mullins had Kangaroo to a written all over his boots. And with support to match, the Raiders were averaging a try every five minutes. By halftime, it was 30-0. Canberra playing as though it was a game of touch. It was a similar second half. Jason Croker and Brett Mullins proved the perfect match. In three minutes, they scored two identical tries. Well, it just looks like more of the same. Cronulla did manage two touchdowns, but 12 points was hardly face-saving on a day that Canberra not only won the game, but the boxing match as well. Yeah, he wants to give him a few. Whack, 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 push, push. Decided the Knights would need a few tricks to keep Souths at bay, but the Rabbits were first to pull one out of the hat. New hooker Jason Bell right at home in number nine. They're not going to catch the little bloke. Down he goes, but over the line. After this sickening head clash, Newcastle lock Mark Glanville was blood bin for treatment as Mellor got the first of his three tries. Intercept that arm. Paul Mellor is on his way. There are 150 to one to catch him. And Melor runs 75 metres to score South's second try. South led 18-6 at the break, but 30 seconds after Ainsco smashed McGaw into touch, his try had the home side trailing by just four points with 20 minutes to go. And only the excitement lasted all of two minutes as Mr Intercept struck again to wrap it up for South's 28-14. Melor gets his second intercept try. There are fans of the good old days when guru growth used to terrorise the opposition. As the half-time entertainment kept both sides waiting in the tunnel, Parramatta fans wished the Broncos stayed there. O'Neill continued to run right as Brisbane scored seven tries to one in a display that keeps the Premiers still in the hunt. At North Sydney, the Bears struck some early resistance from Balmain. North's raced to a 12-0 lead, but the Tigers, led by Benny Elias, managed to stay in touch to trail 18-12 at the break. But Belmain faded in the second half as North just got stronger. The Bears bagged a total of nine tries with Ivan Cleary getting four of his own in the 54 to 18 massacre. Clinton Fletcher, National Nine News. The season has all but finished for St George. This afternoon they showed little spirit against a rejuvenated East. The Roosters winning by 20 points. It was enough to silence the Cogra faithful, Nigel Gaffey scoring the Roosters' first points in a fortnight. 
But it didn't earn an Arthur Beetson smile, nor did this tackle from Sean Garlick on Gordon Tallis. Right on half-time, a smart kick was chased down by Adrian Lamb, East 8-2 in front. The Roosters scored five tries, their first win in eight matches. West rolled into Steelers Stadium full of energy and purpose, all after a week where the coach was sacked. But any Magpie revival soon turned to ruins. Illawarra cranked up its back line, and when Paul McGregor's on the end of it, points are a certainty. The Steelers scored five tries to two. Gold Coast shocked everyone at Seagulls, accelerating to a 16-0 lead over Penrith. But a remarkable second-half turnaround gave the Panthers victory. Graham Mackay's try in the 71st minute locked it up 20-all. His sideline conversion gave Penrith its two-point win. The latter has Canterbury still in front. Norse jumped to outright second, with Manly, Canberra and Illawarra completing our five. It is Canterbury has escaped with a tight victory over Cronulla in the mud at Caltex Field. The Bulldogs won 14-12, but lost Matthew Ryan with a suspected broken arm and had Craig Polamanta sent off for back chatting. It was Eskimo weather south of the city and the dogs didn't like it. They only warmed up when the Sharks made a mistake. Buck Cronulla stormed back. Andrew Weddingshausen was brilliant in gathering metres. From the play the ball, the scores were level 6 all. Matthew Ryan's commitment in defence left him with a suspected broken arm, while Jason Smith's early second half try Smith has scored. came just before Danny Lee tackled him out of the match. Now Smith, oh, Danny Lee! Trailing 14-6 and with 10 minutes to go, Cronulla exploded. Paul Green started it, Dave Borton completed it. Now it's Doolan! Doolan for the line! The last pass to Dave Borton! Two points in it. Craig Polamounter objected to being ruled out of bounds. He was sent off for back chatting as his teammates hung on for victory. In last night's Battle of the West, Norse came out ahead of East. Fairly as eight metres out, he's over! But what could have been all one-way whacker traffic wasn't. Nigel Gaffey's gap-finding mission kept his side in it, trailing 8-4 at the break. Good try! Jason Taylor's shoulder gave up, but not the Bears. Screaming clear in the second half, thanks to an eight-point try. Sean Hoffey wore Richard Carew's arm, the ensuing penalty giving Ivan Cleary two successful shots at goal. And there it is. The Bears won 28-8, their sixth straight victory. Ah, oh, he's all class, this kid. Peter Overton, National 9 News. The race for semi-final positions, Nine's big game after the news is a beauty. Manly hosting Illawarra at Brookvale. In other round 17 results, Penrith 28, beat St George 24, Brisbane 48, annihilated Gold Coast 12, West 28, upset Newcastle 14, and Canberra flog South 48 points to 8. Canberra's try fee started after just six minutes when Brett Mullins got his first. A last-ditch pass from Quentin Pongia put the flying fullback away for his second. Craig Field's pass had good intentions but produced the wrong result. Mal Meninga's 33-year-old legs getting him over 70 metres of ground untouched. Canberra led 16-4 at the break. Rick Stewart's sleight of hand coming up trumps again for Mullins before Noah Nandruku tiptoed over the try line. The Raiders' 10-try rout ended when Mullins scored his fourth, Canberra proving they can win away from home and set to return to the stadium in September. At Penrith Football Stadium, St George opened the scoring through Rex Turp, but the Panthers hit back with three tries in nine minutes. Danny Farris kicked, finding a flying Robbie Beckett. Saints rallied, but when a Penrith second half raid ended with Phil Adamson, the Panthers appeared home at 26-14. Saints resurrected their chances again with two late tries, Anthony Mundine scoring the second, but Penrith held on to keep their semi-final hopes alive and provide coach Roy Simmons with the perfect start to his new job. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. Newcastle's semi-final hopes took a nosedive at Campbelltown this afternoon as West enjoyed a rare bright spot in a season of controversy. It looked like just another awful day for the Magpies when Andrew Johns gave the Knights the early lead. But this time West didn't cave in. Paul Smith scored a minute before half-time. West in front, 
12-6. And he crossed on the other side of the break to make it an eight-point advantage. While Brad Godden got Newcastle to within four points, West showed rare strength of character, scoring two more tries for a 28-14 win. In Queensland's local derby, Brisbane thumped the Gold Coast 48 points to 12, the Broncos pocketing nine tries. Brisbane played its trademark attacking game, Michael Hancock's first, completed by Julian O'Neill, who finished with 16 points. Wendell Saylor's game seems to get better every week. Today, his skills eye-catching and appreciated by his captain. And it seems certain the wooden spoon will fill the Balmain Trophy cabinet this season, last night defeated 18-6 by Parramatta. The Eels smothered the Tigers, scoring four tries to one. Our ladder has Canterbury on top, then North and Canberra. Manly and Illawarra play for their points after the news, while the big mover is Brisbane. Back three. Our Commonwealth Games athletes were guests at Brookvale today, but there would be no gold medals for David Riolo, who returned from a knee injury too soon, an early casualty. Despite that, the Steelers scored first through Craig Simon, who'd only been on the field a matter of seconds. Just come on, and he'll score a try! Manley replied straight away when Cliff Lyons put Terry Hill through a gap. Hancock comes up on the outside, here's a try, Hancock! Showing the footwork of a future kangaroo tourist, Stephen Menzies scored his 14th try of the year. He'll go all the way! Record-breaking forward try scorer for Manly. The Steelers' Darren Fritz was sin bin just before the break with Manly leading 14-8. But even a man down, Illawarra conjured the try that levelled the scores. And then go through. Matthew Ridge's long-range field goal put Manly out by one and exploiting the Steelers' over-eagerness to catch up, the Seagulls ran in two late tries to secure a deserving victory. Anthony Rogers is into space. They won't catch him. Newcastle. Semi-final surge continues this afternoon, holding off a determined St George at Cogra Oval. The Broncos won 28-16 after leading by only two points at half-time. They scored five tries to four. With Brisbane still alive and Glenn Lazarus back from the footballing dead, Saints were out to wreck the Broncos' semi-final run. But when Ricky Walford spilled the ball, Wendell Saylor did all the running. He got through coin, he's away from Mundine and he's in to score! Five minutes later, Saint Sinner suddenly redeemed himself. Out it comes to Walford. Sailor found Steve Renoff on his starboard side for Brisbane to lead 10-4, but Mark Coyne turned his back on the Broncos' defence to send Rex Turt through it. Michael Hancock crashed over to give Brisbane a four-point buffer, but Gordon Tallis combined with Brad Mackay to Harvard just before the break. Then good hands from Noel Goldthorpe and Rod Maybon's footwork allowed Anthony Mundine to show a clean pair of heels. 16-14 St George, the storm clouds loomed for Brisbane, but Renoff was lightning out of dummy half, and Chris McKenna's try on full time gives the Premiers some hope of defending their title. Back inside, McKenna for the line, he skips over That's on his back. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. Last night in Newcastle, Canberra badly bruised the night's semi-final hopes. The 52-16 scoreline, a record loss for Newcastle. Brett Mullins once again starring for the Raiders, scoring four tries. With Marathon Stadium bursting at the seams, Newcastle was on a mission. It's a night of survival for them. But Brett Mullins led an assault that has all but ended Newcastle's semi-final hopes and underlined him as a potential great. That's him. He scored 13 tries for the year and this is his 14th. Then came this. Footwork and speed make a potent combination. Mullins is blessed with an abundance of both. Mullins led an assault that should have got the Raiders 20 years. Stewart and Walters crossed before the break to give Canberra a 30-6 lead. As the Raiders continued to push the pedal, there were some highlights for the locals. But Mullins was razor sharp and he cut Newcastle to bits. A trademark pass from Stewart stretched the lead even further. Canberra scored a total of nine tries. 
Mullins got four in one of the best displays this season. They're looking for four. Put it down. Try number four. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. The first great appearance of Terry Lamb built a sense of anticipation at Waratah Stadium and he didn't let anyone down playing a hand in the opening three tries. Ricochets off a would-be tackle. Then for Simon Gillies. Gillies, he's over the line. Lamb's bomb set up Jim Dimmick as the dogs took control early and they wouldn't be headed. Don't think it's the one they wanted, although now it is. Dimmick away for Halligan and Halligan. He strolls in for the... Just held you Steve Hughes continued the procession, piercing some ordinary South's defence to put Canterbury up 20-0 at the break. Try. Hughes says, it's my turn. Craig Field was irate, but he did lead by example, setting up Jason Sinclair for the Rabbits first. Gets out of a tackle, goes under the uprights and scores. Jim Jason Williams gave the Bulldogs an 18-point lead to offset any chance of a genuine fight back. And really, Hay flicks it out, Williams goes in and scores. By the final siren, the gallant Rabbits did try hard, going down by just seven points. Into space, one to beat, draws him, Craig Field for the line. Injury in the Gold Coast Balmain game, with the Tigers Danny Stapleton taken to hospital in a critical condition after suffering a head injury. In round 18 results, Manly 28 defeated West 14, North 20 home against Parramatta 14, East thrashed Penrith 30 to 8. Gold Coast 32, Royal Balmain 6, and Illawarra beat Cronulla 42-18. Traditionally, Illawarra and Cronulla love to engage in tough, tight contests, and the first half suggested that's exactly what was going to happen today. Although the Steelers opened the scoring with a penalty, it was the Sharks who set the pace. Andrew Neves' try was followed by a poor green bomb. In the swirling breeze, Richard Barnett judged it best to give Cronulla a 10-point lead. Just before the break, that was reduced to six, with replacement Keith Beauchamp raising the locals' hopes. The second half saw a major turnaround, with Illawarra unstoppable on their home ground. Tries to McGregor, Roy, Cross, Walsh and Wishart underlined the Steelers' resolve, with their final five hopes alive and kicking. At Campbelltown, West captain Jimmy Sedaris got the Magpies off to a good start, but then Cliff Lyons decided to make his mark. First, he put Terry Hill across in the 19th minute. Then, just five minutes later, he sent Matthew Ridge straight to the try line. Lyons himself was in two minutes before half-time, and Manley went to the break, leading 24 points to six. Like they did in the first half, West opened the scoring in the second, but unlike the first, this time they didn't wither. The Magpies performed strongly, but Manly was not to be denied. 2v crossing late in the game. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. At Bear Park, North Sydney got a fright from Parramatta before getting away with a six-point victory. Down on their luck for most of the season, the Eels found some in their opening try. While it looked dubious, the Bears were all by the book. Soden's burst from dummy half, the start of a six-man link. Sean Hoppy scored his second after sweeping up the crumbs from Ivan Cleary, but their half-time 12-8 lead was hardly comfortable. The Bears pushed it to 18-8 with a more familiar brand of football, but had to repel a fast-finishing Parramatta to tie up victory. At the stadium, East smothered Penrith, fullback Rod Silver crossing for three tries. While Trevor Gilmister went high, East went four. Halfback Adrian Lamb keeping his back line busy as the Roosters coasted to victory. Another awful afternoon for the Tigers, defeated by the Gold Coast, and their lock forward Danny Stapleton taken to hospital with a serious head injury. Wayne Bartram led the Coast charge, his 20 points at club high, while Benny Elias spent 10 minutes in the sin bin after this all-in brawl. Our ladder has Norse on top, but with Canterbury and South to play for the boot, the difference. An impersonator entertained the Penrith faithful, but after 90 seconds of football, Gary Freeman gave them the real thing. Phil Adamson crashed through flimsy defence, and at 10-2, Penrith were poised to pull off an upset. But Matt Toshak barged over, and Sean Hoppy pounced on a charge down to put Norths in front. He scores the easiest try. That Penrith replied with one against the flow. Jason Lydon's intercept making it 14 all. Greg Florimo's double act with Jason Taylor produced this try. Taylor then booting the Bears an eight point buffer. Possible. Brad Fittler's sprint from the scrum base gave Penrith some hope, 
but referee Annesley ruled Ivan Cleary did ground this Taylor bomb, ending Penrith's slim chance of a semi-finals berth. Who's got it? It could be a try. Last night, Canterbury copped a cold reception, but soon curdled Canberra's blood. Jason Smith reported for this hit on Ricky Stewart before the halfback's bomb searched for snow and Brett Mullins came from the cloud. Oh, from nowhere, from nowhere, Brett Mullins, and he's given the try. Brett's father, Bill, didn't know which way to turn as Terry Lamb and Craig Polamounta tried to round up the Raiders. Great defence by the Bulldogs. But the stampede continued. Two more tries saw Canberra lead at half-time 16-2. Six minutes into the second session, the Raiders' skipper set off on a solo rampage. He scores himself! Oh, that is brilliant! Jason Williams hit back for the Dogs, but with Jason Hetherington on report for this tackle on David Ferner, Stewart shifted the green machine up a gear. Albert Fulabai rewarded for backing up Mullins, the Raiders stretching their unbeaten run at home to 20 matches. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. A Silawara in tonight's league match right after the news. In other round 19 results, Brisbane defeated East 34 to 16. Gold Coast 36, upset Parramatta 24. And Manly 32, home against Newcastle 16. A move by this Manly. is becoming a familiar sight at Brookvale. The high-flying Steve Menzies scoring his 15th try for the season. Manly led 12-0 before Newcastle's Russell Wire locked onto a Cliff Lions pass. The centre showing no ill effects from a full game of reserve grade. But luck went with Manly. Matthew Ridges shot for two points, deflecting for Ian Roberts to score four. When Craig Hancock ran in two second-half tries, Manly looked home. But the Sea Eagles were forced to fight off a spirited Knights comeback to maintain their spot in the top three. At ANZ Stadium, Easts were supposed easy beats obstructing Brisbane's semi-final charge, but Rod Silver's quick feet got the tri-colours within four points of the Premiers, and when Richard Caroos pounced on an in-goal mix-up, the Roosters resembled anything but feather dusters. 16 all. Time for a little leadership from Alan Langer. The Broncos ran in two more tries, Willie Kahn producing enough pace to get the Premiers home by 18 points. At Parramatta Stadium, the home side led 18-10 at the break and 24-10 midway through the second half but couldn't stop a Gold Coast revival. The Seagulls running in seven tries to four. David Bovang's length of the field raid running the Eels ragged. Cronulla relied on Andrew Eddinghausen to save them from disaster against West last night. The Sharks scraped home 32-28 after trailing at one stage 16-0. It was a special night for E.T., 200 games for the one club, and while Wes were invited to the party, they weren't meant to upstage the star. And that was just the start. The Magpies flew to 16-0 after 23 minutes. That was all E.T. could take. The Sharks closed the gap, trailing 16-10 at half-time. They evened it up at 16-all. It was a super effort, but ruined moments later. But again, it was Ettinghausen who saved the night. He scored his third try in a late Cronulla blitz, which reaped 16 points in 11 minutes. Cronulla home, 32-28. At Leichhardt, it was just another awful night out for Balmain, trailing St George 18-0. But the Tigers staged a wonderful fight back, John Bentley's late try locking it up 20-all. It was a bright spot that didn't last. A penalty right on the siren gave the Dragons a two-point win. Our ladder has Norse on top, then Canterbury, Manly, Canberra and Brisbane. Illawarra and South play for their points after the news. It's come back while the Steelers eventually shook off a tenacious South Sydney. Paul McGregor's stepping, weaving entrance to the SFS would reappear later to sink South Sydney, who played like their semi-final lives depended on it today. Away, there's the try. The Rabbits' early lead evaporated when Peter Johnston's pass released Callaway, then John Simon. Callaway hears the call. Simon answers it. Simon sprints away. Here's the try. A desperate John Cross saved a certain try, and his effort was rewarded when only a minute later, Andrew Farris scored at the other end for the Steelers to lead 12-4 at the break. Andrew Farris comes right around. 
an advantage reduced to just two when Brett Goldspink scored against his old club. Illawarra's player of the match, John Simon, scored a fine individual try which would have finished most teams. He won't need support! John Simon! But not the ubiquitous rabbits. Journeyman John Elias setting up his skipper Craig Field to trail by only four. Oh, look at Wishart! Wishart from nowhere, but he misses. Then Field was held up over the line. South Spirit and their semi final hopes, broken by McGregor's class and experience. The only qualities a brave South Sydney lack. The right foot, he's got support, but he's over himself. Peter Johnson, there's been a penalty awarded against Illawarra. The Raiders' luck in recent weeks looked to be coming to an end in the first minute. Fullback Brett Mullins was injured, although he did return. Despite Canberra having the better of play early, the Steelers grabbed first points off a John Simon kick after 10 minutes. Lullaby tested! Down for McGregor! 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 Can he get it down? The Red and Whites determined to put the brakes on the green machine. The Steelers led 8 0 at half time, but a costly mistake from Peter Johnston gave the Raiders an opportunity. A few tackles later, they gladly accepted. Inside pass for Ferner, likewise for Pongia. Pongia, inside for Walters. Illawarra's lack of respect for the football in the second half cost them dearly. Another turnover, seeing the Raiders make the most of it, and they jump to a 10 8 lead. There's a try coming, there's a try coming. Nandruko! With 11 to go, another Steelers error saw a Raiders scrum win, and that man Mullins came into the line. for Mullins. Mullins, oh, the big step! Oh, Mullins! Mullins! A Ricky Stewart field goal put the game beyond doubt, and Big Mal finished things off with a late try. The Raiders taking the game 19 to 8, and leaving the Steelers' semi final hopes on shaky ground. They won't stop him! Manly has retained its position in the top three with a strong win against Cronulla at Brookvale today. The Sea Eagles scored six tries to two in their 38 to 10 romp. A scheming Cliff Lyons and a runaway Steve Menzies got Manly on an early roll. Dave O'Donnell followed their raid and got the reward. Three minutes later came the try of the match. Terry Hill showed great strength and skill to get things moving. Then the Manly Magic Show took over. The Sharks were being mauled. After just 19 minutes, Cronulla was down 24-0. The second half started like the first, with Manly full of running and the opposition simply unable to stop them. At no stage did the Sharks stop trying, and when Manly's intensity dropped late in the second half, Cronulla finally got some points. Manly finished in a blaze, a perfectly timed Cliff Lyons pass sent Owen Cunningham on a one-way course to the try line. 38-10 to the Sea Eagles, and their top three position remains intact. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. The big game is between Penrith and Brisbane, coverage straight after the news. In other round 20 results, North thrashed the Gold Coast 36-10. West 34 defeated South 26. Parramatta upset St George 27-12. A surprise 23-16 win for Balmain over East. And Canterbury 30 beat Newcastle 18. This joust against Canterbury was Newcastle's final home game for the season. 20,000 Knights fans soon had something to cheer about when their charges inflicted the first wound. Both teams' forward packs were wearing heavy armour, and despite Daryl Halligan's touchdown, Newcastle led 8-6 at half-time. Paul Harrigan searched for Canterbury scalps and may front the judiciary for this elbow on Jason Smith, but the Knights couldn't stop Terry Lamb. The world's best support player latched onto a last-ditch pass from Jim Dimmick, got a glimpse of deja vu from Jason Smith, then a touch of luck for his hat-trick. And scores his third try of the afternoon. 24-8 Canterbury, but two tries in 10 minutes got Newcastle within six points before Jared McCracken's intercept put the Bulldogs out of reach. Jared McCracken, McCracken picked it off and scored the try as the siren sound. North Sydney consolidated its spot at the top of the table with a six tries to two romp against the tackle shy Gold Coast. The Bears crossed after just three minutes. Matt Sears charging over. North led 24-0 at the break. That was stretched to 36-0 before the Seagulls scored two late consolation tries. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. 
It looked like it would be a disappointing afternoon for Wests against Souths, but the Magpies overcame an early deficit to score an impressive win. South stormed into Campbelltown, scurrying to a 16-4 lead. But the Magpies managed to stay in the game, trailing 16-14 at half-time. Two tries to Paul Smith was just the tonic West needed. The Magpies kept in front, and while the Rabbits came close to regaining the lead close to full-time, they couldn't deny West a 34-26 victory. St George had a bad case of the fumbles against Parramatta at Cogra. In what's been a long, cold winter for the Eels, this afternoon's impressive display gave the struggling club some hope for next season. Parramatta led 18-6 at the break and kept up the momentum in the second. David Woods finished with two tries. At the football stadium, the early signs favoured an eastern suburbs victory over Balmain. The Roosters led 16-8 midway through the second half until Ben Elias kick-started the Tigers' comeback. Grant Stewart made it 16 all with this try. Elias then followed up with a field goal, 17-16 Balmain. Elias wasn't finished though, he set up Stewart as Balmain celebrated only its fourth win of the year. Our ladder has Norse on top, then Canterbury, Manly and Canberra. Brisbane and Penrith play for their points after the news, with the Broncos chasing outright fifth. Put it... But couldn't match the Panthers' enthusiasm. Even the keenest Penrith fan was beginning to concede the Broncos would take another step toward the semi-finals when Julian O'Neill sliced through the Panthers' defence. They can't stop him! However, Penrith knew the best way to beat the Broncos was by letting the ball do the work. Long passes by Freeman and Fittler levelled the half-time scores. Oh, so easy! The young Panthers blunted the Broncos' backline with committed defence. Oh, what a tackle by Beckett! Then former Brisbane forward Trevor Gilmeister threw the longest pass of his life to Steve Carter. Trailing by six, Brisbane put the pressure back on Penrith until Alan Langer's pass lost its way. Graham Mackay may be going to Eastern Suburbs next year, but he was the Panthers' hero today. He's going to run 90 metres! He's heading for the mountain! Steelers fans were cheering just as loudly when Mackay scored his second to bury the Broncos. Brisbane and Illawarra, who lost Friday night, still neck and neck in the race for the finals. He caps a magnificent game! Canterbury veteran Terry Lamb heralded his announcement he'll play again next year with a brilliant three-try effort against Newcastle. Lamb was literally the difference as the Bulldogs retained second place. Bounds off the upright and scores his third try of the afternoon. North Sydney. 303rd match, the Dogs scored four tries to three. The Bulldogs began with a growl when Stephen Hughes flew into a gap and found Scott Wilson looming in support. And will score right between the posts. Mark Brokenshire was placed on report for this tackle on John Simon. It stirred the Steelers into action and Rod Wishart exploded towards the line. Fella comes to Wilson, he's going for the line, over! Illawarra then hit the lead when Brett Rodwell cleaned up the bomb. But that was the end of their charge. Try. It is a try! Good hands by Dean Pay and better ones by Hughes got the dogs back in front and there they stay. Jim Dimmick's storming run saw the lead stretched further. Right there. And when Hughes crossed for his second, Illawarra's Premiership campaign was all but over. Last night, more than 20,000 fans packed North Sydney Oval for the Bears' bash with Brisbane. Oh, him, I got a bone rat, In a defence-orientated game, it was North's who broke first. Renoff's try in the 19th minute, and a Langer field goal gave the Broncos a 7-0 lead at the break. The second half saw North's tyre and Brisbane go on with the job. Mark Soden threw a scare into the Bears' camp when he limped from the field. Officials say it's just a cork knee. The Broncos crossed twice after the break, Renoff getting his second, and then Hancock cleaning up after a North's mistake. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. In the season and Nine's big game is Souths against Manly right after the news. In other round 21 results, Parramatta thrashed East 40-12. Penrith defeated Balmain 22-10. St George over the Gold Coast 30 to 20 and Canberra celebrated Mal Meninga's last game at home with a 40 to 22 victory over West. A new generation of Meningas had a run with Dad for his last game at Bruce Stadium 
But a 70 metre intercept try to West Josh White looked like spoiling the party. Canberra hit back. Albert Fulavai's last ditch pass found room at Wiki. The Raiders hit the front when Noah Nandruka scored, but Canberra's guest of honour couldn't buy a try. West's gate crashing continued. Brandon Pearson putting the Magpies ahead 18-14 at half time. The Raiders put paid to any spoiling in the second half, scoring five tries to one. Laurie Daly's return from knee reconstruction earning full points. Meninga got on the score sheet via his boot and Justin Gooley sent off for a high shot on Brad Clyde. By then the Magpies had been flattened. A record crowd of more than 25,000 farewelled Meninga. The stadium's main stand will be named after the man Raiders fans refer to as the Baron of Bruce. Only pride to play for at Parramatta Stadium before the Eels turned on some plays from the past, but nothing beat Tulsa and Tollett's juggling act. Parramatta scored six tries to East two. Tollett's second half sprint, typical of the Eels' runaway win. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. League's farewells continued this afternoon at Leichhardt as Balmain played their last game. Next year it's a new name and a new home at Parramatta. Thousands were on hand for the Leichhardt farewell, players from the past, some familiar faces, and even a tiger without a stripe, all part of the occasion. Leichhardt has been Balmain's home ground for decades, and all except Penrith wanted to send them off winners. But the match never rose to any heights, the Panthers playing as hard as they had to. The Adamson brothers scored three tries between them, Brad Fittler setting up Phil for his first, and then the fullback doing all the work for his second. In the end, it was a comfortable four tries to two winning margin. Penrith had spoiled the Tigers' party as they prepare to move to Parramatta Stadium next year. In a match with little bearing on the table, St George crossed for six tries to three against the Gold Coast. Nathan Brown starring with three and featuring in two others in the 30 to 20 win. Last night at Caltech's field, it was wet and cold off the paddock, but things were hot on it. Newcastle's Paul Harrigan and Cronulla's Adam Rickson battled all evening with the young Shark having the final say. Only two points separated the sides at the break. Cronulla's Paul Green lucky to see out the match. In all, the Sharks scored four tries to one, Rickson getting the last in the 26-4 win. Our competition table... ...beating a 12-man South Sydney in the 100th game between the famous clubs. Without their injured captain, Craig Field, Souths were expected to be swimming upstream, but just two minutes into the game, the Rabbits crossed first. Cochran, Cochran, he's over! Souths were then struck two crucial blows. McGaw medicabbed off the field following a collision with Stephen Menzies, and in the 14th minute, Tyron Smith dismissed for a high tackle on Owen Cunningham. It's gone! Only a minute later, Daniel Gartner scored with his first touch. and over the line, Daniel Gartner. Even then, Souths wouldn't fold, levelling the scores. He'll get his second. But reduced to 11 men when Daryl Trindle was sin-binned, David Gillespie put Manly in front 16-10 at the break. Gillespie will score. Souths just couldn't defy the odds any longer as the match turned into a predictable Manly procession their 51st victory in the 100th meeting between the clubs. And Clippy, he gets it down! A record crowd. It appears Brisbane has grabbed the one remaining semi-spot. Australia's most durable rugby league player is still enjoying his football because Lamb is playing with some of the most talented young players in the game. Williams, Williams has got it, passed back inside, and away goes Stephen Hughes, unopposed to score the first points of the match. The likes of Jason Smith and Jason Williams are approaching the peak of their form. Lamb still has the legs and the nous to support them. Lamb's try put Canterbury out 10-0 and the Magpies seem to be losing interest when Darrell Halligan scored a soft try. The Bulldogs leading 16-0 at the break. And Halligan's prints, what was it? 80 metres. Dean Pay was reported for allegedly biting Josh White but it was just a brief, if juicy, subplot to the Terry Lamb show. On now to Hughes, Stephen Hughes, back inside, Terry Lamb, for his second, he's got it! After scoring his 150th first grade try, Lamb then engineered the one that sealed the minor premiership. 
looks for support, there's Polamato, on to Williams, Leach comes at him, this is a race, oh Polamato, I, I should say Williams is too good. The Canterbury captain left the field as a precaution after injuring the arm that was broken earlier this year. I think it's just the cork I have, so I'll probably Monday I'll have x-rays. It was no coincidence that West then ran in a couple of tries. However, the Bulldogs finished strongly and will now get a week's break before the major semi-final. Illawarra's slim semi-final hopes remain barely afloat after Rod Wishart commanded Kangaroo Tour selection with a match-winning performance against Newcastle. They've been begging and praying for. Needing Balmain to beat Brisbane tomorrow to force a playoff, the Steelers' joy should be short-lived. Housen started last night's game with a season try tally of 13. He quickly added to that after some good work from his teammates. Paul Green and Mitch Healy laid on ET's second four-pointer. Cronulla led 14-0 at half-time, but any chance of a Rabideau comeback was wiped out. Eddinghausen again. Five minutes later, and it was try number four. Andrew Neve delivered the pass. The South's defence was trying, but targets could have been better. This high shot on Adam Ritson. And this one, the tackle of the night on referee Tim Mander. E.T. finished with five tries, doing all the work for his last four-pointer. A 42-0 victory to the Sharks. If the grand final is ever played on a Saturday night at Caltex Field, Cronulla would start odds-on favourites. At the Sydney Football Stadium, Eastern Suburbs and the Gold Coast finished their year with a high-scoring match. Roosters replacement 5'8", Jamie Shepherd grabbed the first of his three tries after six minutes. A Tony Iroh bomb set up Eastern Suburbs' second try. Seagulls fullback Shane Kenwood doing everything except catching the ball. The Gold Coast fought their way back into the match before half-time with Russell Buzian finding some space out wide. Eastern Suburbs extended their lead to 24-16 after the break. Shepard gets his hat-trick. The Seagulls weren't finished with. Two tries in five minutes against some pathetic defence. Wayne Bartram plunged over to put them in front. But with only four minutes remaining, new hooker Robert Mears crashed through for the match-winning try. The Roosters win by 30 points to 28. A disappointing season over for both teams. Coaches Phil Gould and John Harvey with plenty of work to do for 95. But away match of the season is a beauty tonight. Manly against Canberra right after the news. In other final round matches, Brisbane secured a top five spot, defeating Balmain 41 to 6. Parramatta down Penrith 23-16. And North thrashed St George 48 to 22. St George made its intentions clear from the outset. With nothing to lose, the ball was thrown around at every opportunity and it paid early dividends for Mundine. The Bears looked in trouble when Hardy then strolled over. But that marked a North Sydney comeback. Nothing was going to stop fairly. Quick hands presented Hoppy with a clear line. And when Florimo found Sears in support, the Bears were back in business. North of the border, Brisbane played host to Balmain. The Tigers offered early resistance, but as everyone expected, the Broncos simply wore them down. Leading 17-6 at the break, Brisbane completed the kill, scoring seven tries to one in the lopsided affair. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. Parramatta finished the season on a winning note. The Eels defeating Penrith by seven points. Pride was a major motivator for Penrith and Parramatta. The Eels first to feel proud when Chris King scored. But Graham Mackay produced the same game-breaking form that destroyed Brisbane a fortnight ago. With Penrith out of the semis, Mackay served notice to Kangaroo selectors scoring two tries. But it wasn't enough. Parramatta winning by seven points. 
claim the all-important third place on the rugby league table with a classic victory over Manly in the final round showdown at Brookvale. In a game played like a semi-final, the Raiders sank the Sea Eagles in a second half blitz. Manly must now play Brisbane in the sudden death semi. A massive Brookvale Oval crowd got the Sea Eagles adrenaline rushing. Only stoic Canberra defence preventing Manly from drawing first blood. Oh, what a tackle! Having tempered the initial tempest, Laurie Daly, starting in his first game for six weeks, showed the benefits of freshness. Broker back for Daly, there's the play! But Manly's man with equal natural gifts levelled this vital game at six all at the break. Menzies, Menzies, he's over! Manly fans could have been wishing the rescue helicopter plucked Ricky Stewart from the ground because the Raiders playmaker proceeded to pluck the Sea Eagles, his kick setting up the game's most lethal try scorer. Get the belt! Mullins! Oh, that is magic! Stewart's deft hands wrong footing the manly defence. And now Wicky! Wicky! In the space of seven minutes, Canberra led 18-6. Then rugby league's premier halfback put the Raiders out of reach. Adds another point to the total! Manly breached Canberra's line a couple of times late in the game, but the Sea Eagles must now prepare for a sudden death semi-final against the Premiers. He scores for Manly! The Broncos... Premiership with a convincing victory against Norths in this afternoon's major semi-final. The Raiders were in awesome form, crossing for five tries to take the match 26-12. Cronulla defeated Canterbury in reserve grade, but the Bulldogs were too good for...